acting up. Things are wonky, man. I don't know what's going on. All right, everyone, welcome back. Another day in the mortal realms. We got a got a big one today. We're going to talk about the Sylvaneth book. How you doing, Bill? Oh, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, I'm tired, but we're going to get, oh, get dude, through this. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I just had a rough week, but you and I, we're here. We're having fun. And I got a couple games in with the new General's Handbook. I don't know if you did. Ooh. I have a game next Wednesday. Nice. Um, neither one of the game's bounty hunters mattered. Really? Interesting. Yeah, because the okay. first one of them was a uh, Sylvaneth versus Maggotkin. Okay. And um, my bounty hunters were Kurnoth hunters, and I was fighting uh the Blight Kings. Mm -hmm. And I rolled like twelve attacks, and three of them hit. And they were like sixes, so they just did the mortal wounds most of the time. And then oh, like, everything funny. else they fought was just um, not like, a like a blight or a magath rider or something of that ilk. Yep. Yeah, or like a plague drone. So that was really funny. So interesting thing. Apparently, the daughters of Cain, their one of their invocations is minus one to damage. Yep. So it kind of neutralizes bounty hunters too. Yeah. And that's what I'm playing against, so. Cool. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were I talking mean... about on stream, like, when we were doing that book, how good that thing was. Yeah. It's like, it's only 40 points. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, so. Like that, and their better rally, like, they're... and their better uh, battle tactics. Uh -huh. Yeah, that book's going to be a problem for a little bit, I think. Yeah, I think so. But, you know, we, we, we'll we all knew that was happening. <laughs> yep. But yeah, so, so what are you? Go ahead. I was gonna say, what are you painting today over there? I have some Gossamer archers for the new Sylvaneth line from Echoes of Doom. Very I only nice. have five nice. right now. I might That's get okay. one more later, but I'm not. They're one of those units that, like, yeah. Full disclosure is like I'm gonna say I don't know if they're good because I could see them being useless or I could see them being the meta for this book too. You know. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that a little bit more, but yeah, they got they... that in store. Mm -hmm. The one, the yeah, I played one game with the new General's Handbook with them against Maggotkin of Nurgle, and it was the uh, the mission where you activate the objectives one at a time, mm -hmm. and that was such a fun mission. Nice. Yeah, so that was a great time, and I played a couple of our friends here. We're starting a path to glory. And I'm picking Sylvaneth as my Path to Glory army. Ooh. And the list was Very literally for you. Um, a Tree Lord Ancient, Lady of Vines, and a Warsong Revenant. Okay. And that was nice. it. Yeah. That's funny. And I ended the first game. I lost because it was like the ritual, and I just rolled ones the whole time. Oh, and I sucks. couldn't take points from him, of course. Yep. And yeah. I ended up tabling him and not losing a. I ended the game with full wounds because <laughs> of the healing in that. Book. Oh my! Oh my God! <laughs> That's insane. Really but you still cool. lost. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And the other game I had was um OCR Bone Reapers versus Night Hunt, and it was the uh, t the tug of war mission, but it was only a thousand points. Okay. And just like every everything went wrong for the poor OCR. Oh yeah. Just like. Oh, I need to make this six inch charge. Oh, I rolled a five. Oh yeah, you can't re-roll that. Fun. No, you can't. Yep. Stop trying, OCR Bone Reapers. Yeah. You're not allowed. So that was that was my life that day. Yeah. And that's just how it goes sometimes, but Yep. And the Night Hunt player had fun with Kurdos and just smashing through anything it touched. Because he's oh, that's good. so good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And was then, that uh was that did that happen to be a loan from your collection? Yeah, it did okay. actually. Yeah. <laughs> Just to spite me. Well, your models performed well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's funny because he was in the Path to Glory game too, being borrowed. And I like immediately killed him turn one and then he didn't roll any like save whatsoever. 
Oh, man. Yeah. So, like, the joke was he was being spiteful about being played in somebody else's army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he apparently got you back later, though. Yeah. Yeah, he's really good. Nice. And then I had a, a Thondia campaign game, actually, with Nighthawk versus Deepkin. Oh. Where I tried the new Purple Sun. How'd that go? Um, Chain Rasp Hordes with Rend 3 is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I bet it is. Yep. And so, like, just, yeah, and it didn't have the chance, it didn't, yeah, there was a couple times where it could have killed an Eidolon and a Turtle, and I didn't roll for oh it, my thank God, because that yeah. would have just been, like, an awful experience for him, and probably for me, too. I mean, it always is when you're like, oh, sorry, man, because then you have to be like, do I, we just pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. 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 It's just feel bads all mm -hmm. around. I hate when that yeah. kind of shit happens. Yeah. But even at 70 points, I think... Nighthaunt is, like, an army that can break the parity of, like, the minus one save that's supposed to be on both sides. Oh, that's a great point, actually, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's interesting. Granted, I think the range is short enough where you can actually just manipulate it so that it's one-sided most of the time you anyway. Probably can. Yeah. But. But you didn't even have to try. Yeah, it was, it was, it proved to be very powerful. Nice. And, like, Cogs didn't need any testing to know that it was really good, too. Yep. But, yeah, like, every night hot list I have is just 110 points set aside for those two. There you go. Yeah. For now. But, yeah, so you have a game Wednesday. What are you playing? I am probably, probably going to play, um, I think I'm going to try Bellicor, finally. Oh, cool. In real form and not in not in one page rules form, mm -hmm. which I played again today. We, we we played that today because we weren't sure if we were going to be able to get our books. Okay. In time, which we did, but we were we were just going to play that. So I got a few games of that and went one and one, and Bellacor was awesome there. But I want to I want to finally play him in uh, in Sigmar too. So I think I'm going to run to spoilers. Oh, we're cool. playing fifteen hundred points. I'll run to spoilers with Bellacor and and my Corn Demon Prince, and then we'll fill it out with something. We'll figure it out. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. I think um, Chaos Warriors are in a great spot to be expert conquerors right now. Oh, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, because they're hard to move to begin with. Yes, they are. Yeah. And then you're probably trying some of your cavalry, like you said in the show. I probably will, yeah. I'm a little less incentivized now that I know he's just going to have a bubble of uh, minus one to damage, but, you know, that's all right. Yeah, that's true. We'll probably still give it a go. He could fail to cast it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think I've got a way to get rid of it, though. Is the problem? Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's actually a great point. Not every army has a way to get rid of that, huh? I could take a. Um, actually, I could take the what call it? Couldn't I? The 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 shrine. And that might actually even be the play. Oh yeah, then there you go. Because he can mm. pray that away. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Right away. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm loving the new Sylvaneth book. Oh, that's great. Is great news. I think there's been a lot of negative opinions on it on the internet, I, from what I've noticed. Mm -hmm. But I think when we, we talked about the Soul Blight book, we thought like a lot of a lot of the old strategies got nerfed, and there's a lot of brand new strategies, and people are focusing on the old strategies getting nerfed. Yeah, not not on the new stuff. Yeah, but exactly. You can do. I think oh. the book's going to greatly surprise people. Nice. It's probably like a, a high mid, to be honest, not like a very powerful. Yeah, but I mean, that's fine. That's exactly where you want a book to be, I think, most of the time. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because like we... I never like it when like the books, when you get a book that, like, I did, I basically stopped playing Stormcast and didn't get the dragons that I was going to get because it was like, oh, they're just so overpowered, I'm not going to feel good playing these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you will now, but I get it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, like, now I'm actually more excited to play them than I was when they were, like, mm -hmm. insanely stupid. Now they're just mostly stupid. Yeah. And we were talking about, like, the... On our show last week about how we think the breath weapon should have gotten nerfed. But, like, mm -hmm. um, what I've been... What I didn't really realize people were doing, because I didn't have a priest in my list, is you could just translocate them outside of nine and then move them and charge them in the hero phase. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, so, like, that's the reason why, like, they got rid of the double move, which yeah. I'm fine with them getting rid of the double move, because 
It makes them not like a I lock you in your zone alpha anymore. Yeah, exactly. Which is Yeah, <laughs> a more fun better. experience. Yep. And now like they can they might be a little overpointed now. I don't think so, but maybe. But that's on the that's... better side of, yeah. of things. <laughs> yeah. They still seem like they're probably really good. Yeah, they're gonna, they're, they're still going to rock most games. Yeah, I exactly. Think. Like, if you weren't even doing that... Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I was double moving. But sure, like, of course. <laughs> I didn't even think to, like, translocate them. Like, but, yeah. <laughs> I still would have liked to see the breath go down again. But... Eh, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, you don't want to take everything away, right? Yeah, I I think it's also dangerous to do multiple things at once too. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, because you're like, oh, I do this, 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 these are all problems, okay, and then it just sucks. And then it's like you have nothing. There's yeah. no bite whatsoever. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's usually a combination of all the things that cause it to be a real issue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm at the point now in like my Warhammer experience where now. Whenever I read something that says double or twice, I'm, you're like, hmm. it's just too much of a differential. Yep. You know? <laughs> like double combat, double move, double shoot. It's Every, like, what did you do? Yeah, it's either on a unit that's like so bad that it's playable because of it. Yeah. Or it's just too good. Kind of like, uh, um, Flesh Eater Courts became playable just because of, uh, Double combat. Having, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're they're like extra compound of that whole concept, right? Because like right. they're over costed because they summon. And then they double fight. So like these are like the worst war scrolls in the game. Yeah. But it's like a good army because their allegiance or abilities. Or, or if they're like on any other army would be like the most played army. Oh yeah. Easily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's that 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 Balthazar gold's not doing anything. All right, not doing it for you. <laughs> that shit is that shit is dry as a bone. Oh, or just mostly empty. <laughs> One of the two, yeah. but not 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 gonna cut it. Yeah, I understand. Or I'll just use a different gold, and that'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. Oh, another piece of news too is um, did you see? Oh yeah, you def definitely did see the uh, new Zinch versus Lumineth box. I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't possibly know it's what another Foot Wizard's gonna do for Lumineth, but I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I don't know. We said the I same could... shit about the Fire Slayers and the Deepkin, and both of those heroes have actually been pretty important for their books. I mean, that's fine. Yeah, that's even I, good. I just, <laughs> yeah. I just don't know if they're the most. What heroes are the most exciting things in the world? They're really not. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, okay. I gotta say though, I'm way more of a fan of the foot heroes than I was of like the endless spells in second edition, though. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I think the endless spells look way cooler, but they were just like unusable. Yeah. In most of the time, so he was like, "Oh well." Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that looks cool. I'm glad I saw that. All right, we're good. Yeah, and like the thing that like made me really sad about them too was a lot of the times it was like an army that needed like more units. And it's like okay, right. you put a sculpt for like these spells when they could have like eh. man. Yeah. Like ima like imagine how much happier people would have been with like fire slayers instead of getting the invocations. Got like a cavalry box. <laughs> yeah. No joke, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what they did for Sylvanet this time around. I was yeah. very surprised. Yeah. I wasn't surprised they were the book. I was surprised, like, how many goodies they got, though. Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't surprised they were the book at all. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was surprised, definitely surprised by the goodies. Mm hmm And, like, it was just also... Somebody looked at the army and saw exactly what they needed. Like, yep. oh, this is supposed to be, like, a mobile army and everything move five? Okay, let's fix this. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, let's give them cavalry and some archers, and yeah. there we go. And Lady of Vines is, like, my favorite thing right now. That's awesome. I Yeah, she's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, and then the new Cursling looks fantastic. Oh, it does. It yeah. does. You know what's funny is I can play all, like most of the units in that box with my armies. Oh yeah, you definitely can. Yeah, but the funny part is I like still have like six discs of Zinch that I haven't built yet from the previous box that I got with them. Oh, so... from uh, the... the... Yeah, the and I also have general. boxes of Illuminate stuff that's not built, so I, I it's not happening. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> got too many projects. Yeah. And not enough time to do them all. Man, I just... Yeah, I definitely... It's not even, like, time to build them. It's just, like, time to even, like, play as much as you want with each of them, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I get in, like, one or two games a week at most. Yeah. And so, like, I'm never going to, like, play all the games I want. Mm -hmm. And that's playing a quicker game in one-page rules, right? So, like, most of the time, anyway. Yeah. So, like, I probably only get one, definitely only one game a week at max playing full game of Sigmar. Yeah, but it's definitely curved my uh, army buying. Just realizing, like, how... Like, I haven't played as much Night Hunt as I wanted to, and I play every weekend. Right. You know, <laughs> like, yeesh. I say that as, like, I've got those uh, those mini wargaming uh, Chaos Space Marines coming in at some point, so I'm totally actually starting another army. But that's yeah. beside... <laughs> well, like, that's, like, kind of awesome and historical. You know, like... Yeah. <sighs> I think the good thing about them is they they it's not like I have to build those. They just come as a uh, oh, okay, yeah. They just come pre-built. So it makes it's going to make it a lot easier to just be like, "All right, I'll prime them. I'll paint them quick or not, depending mm -hmm. on the model. We'll get them on the tabletop." Yeah. I'm not excited about that. I do like building, but I know people who hate building. So Oh, I I I do like building too. It's just, you know, like a when you're getting them in mass, it's really yeah. yeah. It's it saves the time Someday, for yeah. sure. Yeah. But yeah. The new curse league looks sweet. Oh, it does though. So I'm happy for them. Yep. From like a kit that actually looked really good too, before, like the new one just looks so so good. Yeah. Now they definitely got. They definitely know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. It comes to that. All right. Let me uh. Yeah, so, and then, this week's going to be Sylvaneth, next week's going to be Skaven. And then I think the week after that, we'll have the Contrast in, right? Um, yeah, so it's pre-order... This weekend. This week, but, um... But it's a two-week period, so no, we won't have them. Okay. okay. There was a little tiny tidbit in the thing that was like, two pre-order, and I'm like, oh, that sucks. Oh, I missed that entirely. Yeah. All right, well, it was literally just too. one line tucked in an article, and I just happened to be rereading it because I was like, oh, I'm excited about this. I randomly reread something about it. And it was like, oh, well, that's oh, sad. Oh, and I just, yep. <laughs> and I just made myself Damn. sad. Oh, well. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, well. Yeah. We'll figure something out between then. Yep. But... I am so excited for that show, though. Yeah, that'll be a fun time. Yeah. Just paint everything we can. Yep. And I'll probably do I'll some just... of the buggy riders then. I'll get all of those uh those zombies built so I can just like <clears throat> just try all the colors and Oh all. assembly line the zombies, yeah. <laughs> oh well assembly line might be a strong word. I'm gonna go through and just like <laughs> plop every color uh, from all the new ones on there and see how they all come out. Yeah. Well, that's my plan anyway. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right. All right. Shall we get to the review? Oh, let's do it. I think it's time. <clears throat> All right. So, Sylvaneth. They were an army that was insanely, insanely powerful when it first came out. And then the game evolved around them and they kind of fell behind. Their second edition book was more of a nerf than a buff with some huge fundamental design issues. And now this is take three of it, and I think they're in a really interesting, good spot right now. A lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of like. 
it's weird techie list building and like gameplay. So mm-hmm. I feel like you're gonna struggle to like learn how to do this army right, and then like once you get a hang of it, you're gonna be able to like play our circles around people on the objective game. Which that sounds like fun. Yeah. So I'm really excited to, you know, get good as the kids say, you know? <laughs> Gotta get good. Yeah, absolutely. A couple things about the army that I did find frustrating in list building is like everything you want to bring is a hero with 10 or more wounds. Not everything, but like, it's really hard to get like uh, command entourages in this army. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, because you're like, oh, I want a Spirit of Durthu, and then I want like a Tree Lord Ancient, and you're like, okay, that's like 600 points, and they're both like big heroes. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's definitely an issue this army has, but that's also like a world's smallest violin kind of problem, too. Yes. (laughs) You know? So I can't even complain that much about it. Yeah. Oh no, you have a bunch of really cool big heroes. I yeah. feel so bad for you. But like this is off the back of like for me Night Hunt and Skaven who fill those battalions so easily. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they definitely do. Did you did you have a game with Skaven, by the way? I had yes, I did have a game with Skaven. I forgot to mention that. Oh, okay. And um I know we're not going over that. Yeah, week, I'll but... I'll go I'll talk about it real quick though. I ended up winning the game. Because of grand strategy, because we tied game, oh, that's and then right. I got my grand strategy, yeah. and he didn't. Nice. This is on top of uh, both of my cannons doing like four damage, and then blowing up, and then my uh, warlock engineer blowing up on a critical turn where I needed him to kill a five wound hero with three damage on him. Oh my goodness! And it just blew up instead. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, look at grand strategy mattering once in a while. Yep. Although it's funny that, like, we made such a big deal out of that. <laughs> or I just did, because it was like, oh, the grand strategy mattered. It was crazy. Yeah. And just a little happy. Either way. Yeah, usually it doesn't matter, but it might matter with the new General's Handbook. It might? Yeah. But overall, like, this army is so cool. Another really cool thing, we'll get into it a little more later, is you get basically two sub-factions. So you get to like. Mix oh yeah, that's right. Yep. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's... you could take. Can Go you ahead. technically take more, or is it like three and three is pretty much the max? For what? For the Skaven. Oh. Yeah, it's like three and three, and then there's like one hero for one of the factions that counts as two. Oh okay. Yeah, and then there's like some sub factions that like splash. Pretty easily, where like one hero is all you really super want. Gotcha. Because like that, yeah. We'll get this is this is the well, wrong show yeah, for that. Like, next week, next week. Sorry, but anyway. you know, when I said two sub factions, I meant Sylvaneth kind of has two sub factions. Oh, okay. Because you have your actual sub factions and you have seasons. Ooh. Yeah. So, first thing is places of power, which you pick three terrain pieces on the battlefield and they count as overgrown, so you can like teleport to them and teleport away from them. And your seasons affect you based if you're on your wildwood or overgrown terrain too. So that's a pretty important thing to have. Yeah. And like when I was talking about like core issues the army had is like before you can only teleport between the trees you set down. And if like you couldn't put trees down on the battlefield because of the terrain, that's pretty that's some tough titties for you. Yeah. But now like there's an inbuilt way in the army to have more terrain. So you don't even need to, like, buy as much, too. Which is awesome. Yeah. Like, that was probably a barrier to entry. Yeah, the biggest sure. barrier of entry, for sure, Yeah, for that army. So, like, it's a great quality of life thing, and, like, it's not even just a finance thing. It's just, it makes the army easier to play, too. Yeah, which is, that's really awesome. Yeah, two thumbs up. Double whammy. Yep. yep. Basically, yeah, you could teleport, if you're wholly within nine of one, you could teleport to wholly within nine of another. Um, with no enemy units within three inches of them, and outside of nine of enemies. So, your enemy will be able to put Sylvan, or their units all over Wildwood and stop you from teleporting. Mm. Which is why it's important to have, like, which will be, yeah, 
Ma yeah, because making trees isn't, like, dead in this army either, and that will definitely help you get out of some binds. If you can, like, pull it up trees with your spells. Uh -huh. Um, And also, like, I think the first read is you put all of your overgrown stuff in your opponent's territory, and that kind of calms that idea down a little bit, too. Because if you just put it in their territory, I'm like, all right, I'll put some chaff next to it, cool. You can't use these now? But maybe there's, like, play to that, too, you know? Because you're like, oh, oh, I want to force him to dedicate. Right, yeah. Behind. Especially if he's playing more, like, of an elite army and doesn't really have the units to, to leave behind. Yep. Exactly. And then if he ever gets to a situation where he has to leave, you have that spot open now. Right. Yeah. Also, once per turn in your combat, after you fight with a Sylvaneth, you could teleport it out if it's within nine of a Wildwood or an Overgrown. And put it the same restrictions as the other rule too. Outside of nine and outside of three of enemy units. Wait, when can you do that one? When after it fights. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we'll talk about some strategies too that I've been thinking of where you just charge something in, fight, and then run away immediately. Or like even if like you're getting charged, they have to like pick the thing that they want to like try to kill. Because then you can save the other one. There's just so much applications to that rule there. Yeah, they're definitely Very powerful. Is. Yep. Yeah. And then every Sylvaneth has a casting value 6 spell that puts a tree anywhere on the table. Yeah, oh, is it a, range of a 18. single tree or like a... Uh, or a uh... Let's see. A wild one terrain feature. So it can be 1, 2, or 3 trees. Okay. Yep. And yeah. There's definitely benefits to doing only one. Yeah. There's sometimes where it only fits, too. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That, that is the benefit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But yeah, pretty strong allegiance abilities to begin with. Yep. Yeah. Um. So we only have six command traits here, but we have some very powerful command traits. So there's three that can be on any Sylvaneth, and there's three that have to be on a wizard. And... This is one I'm going to use a lot, called Gnarled Warrior. What this does is it gives your general basically ethereal from Night Haunt. Its saves can't be modified positively or negatively. Oh, wow, that's a good one. Yeah, especially on like an army where like you have some heroes that are 3 up save 14 wound guys. Yeah. Can you like put that on a Spirit of Durthu? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, you could put it on Spirit of Durthu. Another thing I forgot to say, too, is in your hero phase, everything near an Awakened Wildwood or a Overgrown Terrain heals one wound. And That sounds bonkers powerful. Yeah, so, like, you have some real defensive options in this book, which, yeah. you know, I feel like you should, because I feel like if you're a giant ancient tree, like, that, that seems like a defensive thing, right? Yeah, it, it, it feels right. Yeah, feels right, and... Gnarled War certainly helps that. Yep. And actually, I've been putting this on the Tree Lord Ancient, and we'll talk about that a little bit too later when we talk about their War Scroll. But well, yeah, I, I think that's a, a really good command ability. That <laughs> it's so good. The yeah. next one is subtract one, or Lord of Spite, subtract one from attack characteristics of melee weapons used by enemy units that finish a pile and move within three of this general until the end of that phase. Wow. So I'm pretty sure the way the rules are is that whenever you're selected to fight, you have to make a pile and move, even if it's of like zero inches. So it just always yes. it just always happens. Yeah. Unless they pile out of combat. Which Yeah, yeah, if they pile out of combat with you, which which can happen. Yeah. So you could like rotate around like a nearby unit or something. Yeah, exactly. But still like most of the time that's gonna take effect. Mm-hmm. Minus one attack is a huge debuff, too. It really is. It is to a minimum of one, though, right? Yeah. Okay. But, like, a lot of stuff, like, especially if, like, expert conqueror hordes happen. Like, yep. And there are two attacks that halves their... Yeah. Oh, yeah, it halves their damage up, but yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Extremely powerful. Yeah. And then this one is awesome, too, War Singer. So, at the beginning of your turn, everything within 12 inches of it gets plus three movement. 
Seems like they those all were very good. Right? That seems really hard to pick. Yeah. Like you have to be very deliberate, I think. There's the gonna be some that there's gonna be at least one of those that just that just rots and never gets used. And it's not gonna be because it's bad. Yeah, like it's it's just because the other two are really good. Yeah, exactly. And like that's better than like some entire books. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah. Command traits. I think I think most books even. Like yeah. those are so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Gnarled Warrior is probably gonna be like the most popular one right off the bat. Is that the um the uh, uh, ethereal one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would guess. And yeah, the only thing I have a problem with Lord of Spites is because like I think Ethereal is better against it's it's good against more things. Right. Like I think the uh minus one attack is has a higher ceiling. But not that much higher. And I just think that's the one that's gonna rot because I think if you want the defensive one, you're gonna take Gnarled Warrior. I Even think yeah, I think it yeah. I think if it became a horde game, then then uh the minus one attack one's gonna be the, the pick. Yeah. But like until that happens, mm -hmm. it's gonna be uh it's gonna be the ethereal. Yeah. And, I think... and then the extra move, I think, is there's going to be, like, a techie list that, like, makes really good use of it somehow. I think it's going to be a list that you want to run, like, the smaller foot units. Because I don't think I'm going to run this if I'm running, like, a Spite Rider Lancer armor army mm -hmm. with their 12-inch yeah. move to begin with. Like, I'm not going to need it. But, like, maybe right, if I'm, it... like, pure Kurnoffs or pure, like, Spite Revenants or... Tree Revenants or some or Tree Revenants teleport even. But like I think like some builds are gonna really want this and some builds are not gonna care. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah it's it's more like a specialized thing for sure. Yeah. But like that's cool. It's better than just like, well, here's the obvious good one. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got three of the wizard ones. There's one that's uh once per turn, whenever Cast a spell. You could pick one Sylvaneth unit wholly with an 18 and heal D3 wounds to it. That's not bad. No. Well, I don't think it adds up to the other ones, but like. No, I don't think so. Yeah, it's cool though. Yeah. Um, when this. And then we have Spell Singer, which. Hold on to your seats. When this general attempts to cast a spell before making the casting roll, you could pick one friendly awakened Wildwood on the battlefield. If you do so. And the spell is successfully cast not unbound. You must measure the range and visibility from that spell from that friendly awakened wildwood. But that's not overgrown terrain. Not overgrown terrain, just awakened wildwood. But holy shit. Right? Depends on what they can cast, but holy shit. So remember the uh all the builds in third edition so far are the Warsong Revenant, who had the AoE spell. Oh. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that you sounds... pick a Wildwood and then nine inches out from that. Boom. Yeah, so it's just like, the only thing that makes me not want to run this is that the mirror exists. But, like, I don't know. This seems like way better than the mirror, because it's just anyone that you want at the time. Yeah. And it's like, alright, cool, I got my... Well, it's not quite back. as it's not quite as uh, mobile as the mirror. You can't be like, mirror, boom. Yeah. Like, right where you want it, right? You, like have you have to be spell like, well, that already trees exists. down. So kind of. Well, but you might not be able to put the trees down based on placement restrictions, where the mirror can go anywhere. Yeah. But yeah. then again, nine inches around, you probably can. Yeah, exactly. Another reason to to run only or to that you, that it's good to only summon one too. Yeah. Funnily enough. Exactly. Yeah, I I think this one's insanely powerful. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, and then we have one more. Um, each time a friendly Sylvaneth unit wholly within 12 inches of this general is affected by a spell or an endless spell, on a 4-up you can ignore the fact of that. And, like, that one seems like the least good one. But, like, that's right. still pretty good. Right? Yeah, it's... I mean, there's some, there's some games that does literally nothing. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So yeah. that one is probably the one that'll remain in the dumpster forever. But, but yeah. like in a casual game, if like you're just getting beat by spells real hard or mm -hmm. something against like your opponent's tech lists, I don't know. Yeah. 
I could I could see maybe being like, you know what, we're gonna do this this time because mm. screw that guy. A four up spell ignore isn't bad either because like the dragons have that and that's like come in clutch so many times. I I guess yeah. the the thing with that though is it's is in that case it's incidental. You'd yep, say that's true. Like they just they just have it, whereas yeah. this you have to pick it and invest something to yeah. have it. So, but I could see like you're in a meta where you're like my only opponents are like Lumineth, Nighthaunt, and like Zinch. Right. And you're like, you and you're what? like, fuck you guys. Yeah, yeah. And like, it's probably the best one in that meta. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, I'm most <laughs> excited for Gnarled Warrior, Spellsinger, and Warsinger. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, but like, is that the most well, like, powerful command trait list we've read? Oh yeah, I think I think far and above. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what were you I get. I guess which one have you tried? Because you you've played for some games with it. I tried Gnarl Warrior and I tried Spellsinger. Okay. And Spellsinger was just ridiculously good because it's a the War Song Revenant spell is a bubble with a nine, and like if you put it on the terrain feature that's a huge huge bubble and oh that's like, a really good point actually because yeah. the terrain feature you wow. yeah and like i was fighting nurgle and i was doing like 12 mortal wounds a cast with that spell just because of how oh my big God. the range is yeah yeah like oh you're in and around my wildwood because yeah. well that's the one you you know because you want to turn off my teleport we'll eat a whole lot of shit instead yeah yeah Exactly. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I yeah, that one's insanely good. And the other one was Gnarled Warrior that I ran in the Path to Glory game. Okay. When we get to the Tree Lord Ancient, I'll talk to you about the build I did there and why it was really silly. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that uh, you already mentioned that you left that game with full wounds, so I would say it worked out well, too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely did work out well. Okay, what's next? Artifacts. So this was on a couple pages. And I think we have nine of them. I don't remember, but we'll go through them. So this one could be on any hero. Um, the Greenwood Gladius is you pick one of the weapons, and at the start of the combat phase, roll D3, and you get that many extra attacks that phase. Um, this one's only worth mentioning because the Spirit of Durthu, because he has a attack that has six damage. And you can get D3 extra of those. But on, like, a normal hero, I don't really care about this. Sure. And then we have the the Crown of Fell Bowers. Start of the combat phase, you pick one enemy unit within six and add one to wounds for... Er, add one to wound rolls for Sylvaneth. Attacks made by Sylvaneth that target that unit this phase. And, like, six inches is pretty narrow. But I don't hate that either. Fair enough. Because, um, like, I would put on... I think if you have a combat hero that you want to, like, fight with, it's pretty good because it just gives himself the plus one to wound as well. Right. But that hero is Spirit of Dirthu most of the time, and he's going to take the sword as my read initially. But we'll see about that. I'm not sure. It sounds okay. Yeah. And then we have the Seed of Rebirth, which you might recognize from the uh, core enhancements, but it's very different. So, first time the bear is slain before removing them from play, uh, roll the dice. On the one the bear is slain, on a two up, the bear is not slain. You heal D3 wounds allocated to them, and any wounds that remain allocated are negated. Wow. That's kind of cool, right? Yeah. So, on a two plus, though, you said. Yes. You don't come back with much, but at the same time... It sounds like Sylvaneth has some decent ways to heal as well. Yes. So you burst someone down, and you're like, well, that was a good job. You did kill me, but I'm back, and now it's my turn, and I heal up, and... Yeah, and the way it's worked, too, is like going. if you overkilled it in combat, like it does still come back up, because the rest of them are negated. Right, exactly. So what I think how it reads, though, is like if you're in combat with two things, and the first thing kills you, the second one gets a chance to kill you that phase, too. I would think so. Now, here's the question. If you have two sets of attacks on something, like, do you do all of your attacks and then you die and, and then you die and come back and the rest of the attacks are negated? 
Yeah, all attacks resolve simultaneously. Okay, they do. All right. Yeah, so you blank a unit. Oh, yeah. Most likely. This works. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, however, also, I think how it works, too, is so you're evocators, and then you kill the thing, and then this comes back up, and then you lightning blast them, and then they die. I believe that's how that works. That does sound correct. Right, because the lightning blast is at after they fought. Or at the end of combat, even. Something like that. Well, yeah, it's either it's either after or before, but in either case, like, if if the blast kills them, then they can fight you, I would yeah. think. The point is, is it's two separate attacks. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's two separate, it's two actual separate things, as opposed to, like, all the attacks count as one thing. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yep. Exactly. But yeah, pretty solid. I like the Greenwood Gladius there the most, but we got three more. That's what, right. Me, yeah. And these are for wizard only artifacts. And we got some sweet stuff here. So, A Court of Ages is a once per game you summon an awakened wildwood with the same rules as normal. Pretty sweet. Yeah, I like that one. I'm not sure not how complaint. much this one's going to be taken. Because I think there's a. Yeah, the Tree Lord Ancient just does this too without taking the artifact. Mm -hmm. And then the spell. But, like. I Depends feel on how like, much you want it, I suppose. Yeah. I feel like if you're a spell singer, general too, it's kind of nice to not have to rely on the cast to do it, and you could just plop it down. Plop like, it down and, has use... and blast somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Did you take it in your game when you played with the, the singer? No, I did not. Okay. But. Um, I took a different relic on this page, and I'll tell you what it. I'll tell you what it is, is when we get to it. Sounds good. Yep. Um, Luneth's Lamp. This one's interesting. I don't love it, though, but... It's the bearer can attempt to banish one invocation in the hero phase, even if they're not a priest. In addition, add two to the spelling rules and banishment rules for the bearer. So, eh. if Purple Sun becomes a huge problem, you might see this, but otherwise it's extremely boring. Yeah. It's... Yeah. And it's very situational. Yeah. You easily run into armies that just don't want to run the Purple Sun, or... This seems like it should be a core one, because, like, you were talking about, like, oh, yeah, I don't even know if I have a way to get rid of the invocations. Right, yeah. And, like, if that's a thing that should be in the game, like, the ability to dispel. Like, I think, yeah, a relic that just lets you dispel invocations is nice. And I like that it has the plus two to dispel other endless spells, too. Yeah. I think what would make this really be, like, tasty if it said unbind also yeah then you then yeah i agree because yeah. then you'd it would almost always be useful exactly yeah. and like it's not like insane either at that point right no i don't think so yeah it's not even as good as some of the other ones mm -hmm. and like this seems like even in like a meta where like invocations are everywhere which that's never gonna happen well it still feels it... like if Dot of the Cane are, with that one invocation are like the meta for whatever reason, then there yeah, you go. But that's a good point. But I, point, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know how they're doing. I don't so. know either, and I think it's a little too early to tell because that book's only like. You have to remember that these books came out before those books FAQs came out too. Right. Which is insanely fast. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yes, yeah, so I'm not sure if anybody really knows yet. Right. I think there's still like some table construct time to go, but like. I don't know. I feel like even if that was like the army to beat and like everywhere you went was a Daughters of Cain with that one prayer, would you still even feel that good about taking this? Probably not. Yeah, right? You would also have to have something that was like that you were, that was doing two damage, right? Yeah. And like you needed it to. Mm -hmm. Which there's that in this book for sure. And then with Bounty oh, okay. Hunters there's always that, right? That's true. But, yeah, I just, I wish this had, like, a tiny bit more bite, and then it would be a really interesting, like, like, silver bullet. Right. I just think it's a little weak for a silver bullet. If, if, yeah, I also feel if like, it had unbind, I, that would be perfect. I also feel like the silver bullets have a problem, right? Yeah, I agree entirely. Because... 
the so if you're playing just with a friend, right? Yeah. You never want to take a silver bullet because it's just like it feels bad, right? Yeah. Because you're gonna be like, oh, I took this thing and I totally didn't know it was gonna be really good against you specifically. Yeah. <clears throat> or you're playing in a tournament and. I mean, I guess unless it's like a super meta call, like you're probably just going to take a more powerful one. one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know if we had this conversation on the show ever, but I would really like to see tournament rules that say you don't pick your enhancements until you see your matchup. That'd be very interesting. Yeah, because I think you could actually try to run like the the counter stuff and and make it. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like that would actually like open up book design too. Right, because like you can't make all of them like generically equally powerful. That never happens ever, and like right. you could prove that that doesn't happen. But yeah. like, if they're like, all right, here are the, like the three really good ones that you build around, and then here's the three silver bullets, and then you come across a horrible matchup, and you get a silver bullet to fight it. Like that's nice. Otherwise, like I mean, you you don't do anything with them. Yeah, you could just do that casually. Yeah. You could just be like, hey, you don't have to pick your enhancements until game time. But the the thing that sucks there is it make it does make the game take longer. That's, I think, the reason why they don't do it. Probably. Is because then you get people, and like I definitely put one of them at some point, where you're like, oh, I don't know. What do I yeah, do? Yeah, it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then that's just like, I mean, there's plenty of that that happens in the game, but just adding another one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like another 15 minutes before every game. Right, exactly. Yeah, so I don't know. I just oh, I feel be fun, bad though. about all these like silver bullet things that never see a home because like you have to pick the generically good one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah. you could try it, Kit. Like, yeah. there's no reason not to try it casually, though, Absolutely right? Absolutely not. Yeah. And it'd be and and then and like if you just know ahead of time, you could just be like, "Hey, here's my list," you know? Yeah. Spend all the time you want looking at which one you want to take. Mm-hmm. I also have seen, like, two list tournaments that I think have done pretty well. Or it's, like, their 400-point difference. And it's, like, the idea to try to do a sideboard that way. And then you get to your matchup and you pick one of your two lists. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So that's, like, the middle ground there. You have to, like, choose in secret or whatever, I suppose. Yeah, I think so. But, but no, that cool. sounds really cool too. Actually, yeah, yeah, that's another good way to do it. So those are the six Give... artifacts. Yeah. What were you saying? Though? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Cut I was you just off. saying it give it gives the more techie, you know, like specific stuff a a home. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, those are the six artifacts. I think there's some pretty good ones. I think the command traits were way more powerful. Oh yeah, it seems like it. Damn, you know what? We forgot to read the most important one, actually. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say I was counting in my head. It's like, wait a second, I think we missed one. Yeah, we missed one. So this is the Vesperal Gem. Okay. And once per turn in your hero phase, when you attempt to cast a Lore of the Deep Wood spell, instead of making a casting roll, you use the gem. You automatically cast it, and then you roll a dice, and on one, you suffer D three mortal wounds. That is very good. Yeah, that's the take. Yeah. Yep. It's so good. And there's like some spell lores that we're about to get to that are like casting value nine. Oh my goodness. And you're like, all right, cool. I, I get it. I, Look at that. Yeah. And and it, it's funny because like actually I'd almost prefer them do it this way. If they insist on having the like the the one beast like roll a die and, like, on a one something bad happens, I'd almost rather them do, like, you know, take a mortal wound or something. Yeah. Instead of effect doesn't happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Because then you can plan for it, but then it's like, oh, but you might suffer, you know, damage from it. Yeah. I but like that feels that. less bad than just not getting your thing. Mm-hmm. I think there's definitely, like, a little bit of a middle ground there, because I think this is, like, not at all enough of a negative. Oh, yeah, but you can obviously make the negative. Well, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if it's not enough of a negative, then the, the effect might just be too powerful, right? Yeah. What if, what if you made it, like, you you may use this if you do suffer D3 mortal wounds. 
That's what I'm trying to say, yeah. Because then they would, like, limit you from using it on your foot heroes as much. Right. And this is also a book that, like, at the end of the hero phase, you just heal one. Yep. So, like, it's not really that big of a deal, unless it straight out kills you. Yeah. And it's after the effect of the spell has been resolved, too. So you still so get, you the, get spell. the spell. So you get the spell either yeah. way. Yeah. Yep. I agree with you, though. I really like this better than, like, oh, on a one, nothing happens. Right. Yeah. I think that's the first artifact I take in, like, every list. By the yeah, way. I mean, yeah. If, if if you're not doing any, uh... no, other way around. If you're, uh, you definitely do that unless you're running, like, a full-on melee list or something. Yeah. But it doesn't sound like that's really the play with them. I don't think so, no. Yeah. Yeah. You have some pretty good wizards here. All right, now we can move on. Sorry about that. <laughs> God damn it, Alex. Missing the important stuff. Yeah, that was actually important. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. We have six spells here. So this one is actually a point of contention because this is a, like considered a nerf. Throne of Vines. Do you remember the old Throne of Vines? It's something like you uh, you get plus to cast, but you can't move. Yep, plus two to cast, can't move. Yep. All right, throw that out the window. It's good. It's dead now. All right, Gone. it's dead. So, so it's casting value nine. Oh, wow. Um, okay. At the end of each phase until your next hero phase, heal one wound allocated to the caster. In each phase? In each phase. Gotta remember what all the phases are. Yeah, so there's <laughs> hero phase, shooting phase, movement phase, not in that order. Charge phase, combat phase, battle shock phase. Gotta remember that the shooting phase exists and just in case you don't have any shooting. Yep. That's six phases, right? I think so. So, you probably missed the hero phase because you're casting it. So, 11 wounds until your next hero phase? Okay. That's pretty fucking good. Oh, and until your next hero phase? Yeah. So, if they double turn, then yeah. it's even more? Yep. That's 17. Yep. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, and remember... Or it could only be six if it's... If you double turn. Sure, yeah. Remember, though, um, it's casting value 9, and that <laughs> is high. But you have an artifact that I just read and almost forgot to read. Yeah, that it's, just um, says... auto cast it. Yep. That just says, I don't care what that casting value is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so that's awesome. That's wild. Yeah. Next one is regrowth, casting value 5. You pick a model, and you restore d6 wounds to it. And it's range Wait, of for casting value 5? Yep. Wow. Yep. So, like, well, this book got, like, resilient overnight. Oh, my God. I remember it was I kind, see... of, kind of squishy, but yeah. I see why you didn't... You left that Path to Glory game with full wounds. Yep. Wow. And then I have Path okay. Healing. Yeah, and then, like, yep. Throne of Vide. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, Holy Even bananas. if, like, you have, like, a unit with, like, four wounds and it took, like, three... And, like, you get two back with this. Like, that's still really good. Yeah. And, like, actually, right. you have a lot of five wound stuff in this book, even. So, cool. Do you want to know something really weird? Tell me. So, I'm I'm looking at the 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 Praetor model online, right? So, so, I'm just trying to replicate it. Yep. And it's different. Is it really? It, in small ways, but it's different. Interesting. Like, like, the backpack. See how the backpack has a skull there? Yeah. There's no skull. Weird. There, yeah, the there's like little extra things on the inside of these, which I don't know how they would even do normally. On the picture there's, online? Yeah. Yeah, there's these little spiky bits coming down from this thing. There's two extra ones here and here on the one online. I was like, oh, did I forget a bit? No, no, there's just differences here. It's so weird. Huh. Yeah. That's That's wild. It is, right? Yeah. I did not expect that. Because I was spin I spun the model around just to be like, oh, I wonder if they did what color they did that skull in. And it's they just didn't. not there, yeah. It's not there. Yeah. That's so weird. It's so weird. 
All right, I guess it's oh, up to you now. Whatever. Yep. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder why they did that. That's weird. I like it though. It's kind of cool. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't intentional, but I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if that's like an older build that they showed and then like redid it a little bit. Yeah, or maybe this was like. Remember how you said they like 3D print them or something? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was just yeah. They just did one of those and. Just seems like they painted would, it up. It would be weird that they did CAD details extra that they didn't translate to the real model. It, it got rid of, of some too. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it just didn't. Maybe like they made that that print and everything was good, but then when they went to uh, when they went to actually like put it onto the sheet, it just like didn't quite work as expected. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I, I'll talk to some of my other horse heresy friends and see if they notice that too. That's I would be very, I'd be very surprised if anyone else noticed that, considering like they probably weren't painting literally from the website. But yeah, that's true. I'd be but surprised maybe. too, but I'm just kind of curious now. Yeah, yeah. All right, where are we? Dwellers below. Casting value seven and range of twelve. Pick one enemy unit within range and visible to the caster, and roll a number of dice equal to the number of models in that unit. Each five up, it suffers one mortal wound. So this is twice as good as the Night Hot one. <laughs> That's on a six. Oh wow. Alright. That also sounds very worth using for uh the um, meta, yeah, coming up. Yeah, but also so just what was the casting value of it? Seven. Seven? Yeah, that's another good that's another good candidate for just like, oh well no one's injured right now. I guess I'll just cast this. Yep. With the uh, with what's his face that just knows everything. Does he still know everything? He does not. Spells? No. Oh, he does not. Oh, okay, it changed. Never mind. Which is why I think it's important to get the uh, command entourage to actually get more spells instead of more artifacts. Wild. You don't see that often. No. And everyone gets an extra one, right? Yep. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. It is. I like that so much about this book. So what what uh what's the tax then that you have to to take for heroes to get it? Um, it depends if you consider the branch witch attacks. Okay. Which we'll talk about that when we get to her, because I have got mixed, it. I have a mixed opinion about her. Fair enough. And then um, if you're running a lot of Kurnoth, you can take the Arch Revenant, and he's really good with them, and he's only 120 points. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Let's see, what's the next spell? So far, three for three, good spells. Deadly Harvest. Yep. Casting value of six, range of three. It deals D3 mortal wounds to each enemy unit within three. I'm not as excited about that one, but I see like the design space where it's you have a thing with like a three up save and 14 wounds that wants to get mixed in. And if it's like in the combat with a bunch of shit, you can hit a bunch of shit, and that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's just it's not terribly exciting, but no, yeah, yeah, but like I don't hate it either, right? What else do we have? Virtuous harmony. This is one I really like. So, it's a casting value seven, range of eighteen. You restore one slain model to a unit with an eighteen, or if it's a dryad, a tree revenant, or a spite revenant, you restore D three models. Ooh. Yeah, so that's like a full Kurnoth, a full Bug Rider. And this used to only restore one Spite Revenant and one Tree Revenant. Or got better for them, too. Yeah. And they got better, too. So, like, that's double extra okay. good. Okay. Yeah. But, like, you see how, like, good these spells are and how important, like, the Vesperal Gems oh, the... for this army? Yeah. Yeah. And then the like, last... Like, you're probably not leaving home with without... A spellcaster, at least. Yeah, exactly. Because like these spells yeah. are just too damn good. Right. And like I think your spellcasters are just really good too. Right. Yeah, I don't have much more to say about that other than I've taken it in every single list because bringing back a free Kurnoth is huge. Seems good. Yeah. Or a free Blood Rider. Yeah. Yeah. And, like those are like what like two hundred something points for three of them. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's a lot of free points. It's like 70 points. Yep. So fucking good. Yep. And then the last one, this one's sweet too. Tree Song. 
you pick a Wildwood within 16, and then all your Sylvaneth within 9 inches of it get an extra rend. Oh, well, that's that's not bad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you, like, you bunker down around a home point. <laughs> like, all of up. these sound like spells that, like, any army would be like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. That's probably, that's my best spell right there. Yeah, which is why I like the extra spell enhancement so much. Yeah. It's like the one time it's like, oh, well, yeah, I don't have the, just the obvious choice. There's all kinds of stuff I can do. Yep. Yeah. Which is extra shame the Warsong Revenant lost knowing all of the spells because... I know, right? But that's probably why, he's, right? Because, yeah, th he would be too good. Yeah. Well, maybe not too good, but he would be... Like, you take him every time. Did he get something to replace that ability? He did not. Oh, okay. He just straight lost it? Yep. Okay. But, like, you could argue that, like, his faction got way better. Oh, sure, absolutely. Which is a... I'm certainly not saying that he's bad now. No. Nope. But, like, yeah, I still like him. <laughs> does Alariel know everything? Yes, still? she does. Okay. And she gets... Does she get bonuses to cast? She does not. Okay. But we'll so talk it'd be about hard. that, too. There's ways to yeah, get around it. Okay. I'm gonna say that'll make it hard to cast the 9-cost spell. But... Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, like, there's some list-building options you can do to mitigate that, too. Okay. Let's talk about the Glades now, our first sub-faction of the book. And a lot of the times in these books, I think we've noticed that there's, like, you have, like, the one you go to, and then they're, like, very narrow. On, like, right, what yeah. you do with them. And I think this is less true in this book, but I still think... It's not like the Daughters of Cain one, where it's, like, every single one of them was, like, really good. You know? But they're not bad. I think we have some pretty good options here. Cool. So the first one is Oakenbra. Oakenbra. Yeah, I forgot to put it here, but like it makes your uh, tree lord's battle line, which is cool. Okay, that's yeah, and that's the, cool. The rule is is your monsters bracket at half, basically. So they need double the wounds in order to hit their first bracket. Oh, that's nice. Which. In a lot of a lot of older books that have that rule, you don't really care about that rule because, like, think about it in Beast, right? Like, you'd lose like your six wounds. You're like, oh, okay, that's fine. But now everything starts bracketing at six wounds or at seven wounds even. So, now it takes way longer. Yeah. So Spirit of Durthu, like his weapon damage brackets from six to D six after six damage, mm -hmm. and now he needs thirteen damage to lose damage efficiency. It's, like, practically dead at that point. Yeah, with his 14 wounds, yeah. Yeah. So this basically wow. means they don't bracket till their last wound. And at which point, it's like, well, they were practically dead anyway. Yeah. So, like, that's... That's really good. Yeah, exactly. It's way better than it seems. When you put, yeah. think of it that way. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm, I want one more Tree Lord, and I'm going to try a list that's two Tree Lords... And um, a spirit of Durthu. And I think that would be really good. Yeah. Also, that lets you put uh, tree lords in bounty hunters, which is hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. All right. And the next one, Gnarl Root. This is the one I run the most. Or when I build lists, this is the one I go to the most. So it's once per turn when making a casting roll, the Gnarl Root. Gnarl Root Wizard within 9 inches, you can roll 3d6 and discard the lowest instead of 2d6. Ooh. So, like, anybody... So, like, Alariel could do that, too, even. Right. Yeah. And then you have, like, a lot of stuff that's like, does damage based on the cast roll. Oh, that's really right? sweet. Yeah, so, like, that's kind of cool. Yeah, no joke. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the strongest one. I don't know what is the strongest one, though. But, like, I like this a lot. I mean, it sounds great. Yeah, I... <clears throat> and also, too, is, like, in the world where I want to run Purple Sun more and more, that's, like, a casting value 8. Mm -hmm. Just, like, letting you get there easier is nice. Yeah. Like, Lady of Vines, her spell we've talked about in the show before is, like, the bubble of 5 up ward. You're like, I really need this this turn. All right, I'll throw three dice at it. Yeah. 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 I think it's great. That seems really good. 
Yeah, I, I'm actually surprised. Like, like, how often can you do that again? Once per turn. Once per turn? I mean, still. That's yeah. like... Yeah, I'm honestly surprised. Like, yeah, I guess the other one is... Yeah, they both sound really good so far. Yep, I'm 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 pretty thrilled with the sub faction variety. Yeah. But like there I don't think there's anything like the uh Xanthar Kai where it's just like, oh, all you, you can make your whole army fight as it dies. You know? Yeah. None of that, but like you have there's another list of sub factions in the seasons too, and we'll talk about those and how they Oh yeah, that's together. right. And you have yep. that whole thing too. That's yep. crazy. Yeah, it's sweet. It's so cool. Let's see, Heartwood is uh, after deployment, but before the first battle round, you pick three different enemy units to be the quarry of the hunt. If you do so, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by friendly Heartwood units that target those units. And it makes Kurnoth Hunter's battle line. Ooh, there you go. Yep. That's the thing. So, I think everybody was still kind of sad to see the uh, the ranged Kurnoth Hunters still be fours, threes. Yeah, but like this makes them three threes, and like you. So can, that's something. Yeah, yeah, and like, but then also that makes everything in your army basically hit on a two. Also, which is and pretty like, sweet. Yeah, and like the three priority things, and like, like honestly, there's definitely like every time you play the game, there's definitely three things that you're like, I have to kill those to win this game. Right. Like three so it's is not a generous too hard to number. Play. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I like this one a lot, too. I Yeah, I agree. Let's see. The next one is Iron Bark. This one kind of sucks. So I was going to say, when are we getting to the disappointing ones? Yeah. So basically, you get a command ability that you can use at the start of the enemy combat phase. This unit will be within three inches of an enemy unit that made a charge in this turn. And so if your guy gets charged, you can use this command ability. And on a two up, the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. And you can use this command ability more than once in the same phase, but you have to pick a different enemy unit to get hit. Sounds mediocre. Right? It's just like, okay. So, when I get charged, I could spend a command point to do on a 2-up D3 damage. Like, eh. Yeah. Like, uh. there's going to be one game where someone's like, oh, dude, it's awesome. Because, like, the, the guy charged me, and he had, like, two wounds left, and I killed him. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's, yeah. Uh. It's like, well, you got lucky. I, yeah, I don't see this one. That's This this one sucks to me. That's okay. We don't need it. <laughs> yeah, you got you got some other good ones. Yeah. Had to be a bad one, right? It's an interesting idea, though, of like a command ability that you can use as much as you want. Yeah. I just think it should have just worked. I... I, I wasn't even going to say it because I feel like I'm a fucking broken record at this point over that. I don't, so I was yeah. just like, you know what? <clears throat> we all know. It's a fine thing to be a broken record of. Like, so like, what if they are listening to like reviews out there and then like everybody in the world's like, do we have to like do this on a two-up song and dance every time? <laughs> every fucking time? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I, I don't think the chance is exciting. No. The chance is opposite of exciting. Yeah, and there's already, like, enough of that in, like, the double turn mechanic. It, it's it's way better to get, like, something excite something cool on a six instead of losing your thing on a one. Yeah, it's like... You're, you're, like, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get a... I get a thing now because you did the thing. I spend my command point and nothing. Yeah, okay. so you're saying, like, if you want to make an exciting version of this, uh, roll a dice on a one through five does D3, but on a six it does three. Yeah. Or something like exactly. that. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, uh, you need to make sure it doesn't spike too hard so that it's not like, like, oops, I randomly killed you. That's why I didn't like, say like a sun six. Style. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like, you could make it like, you know, like, I don't know, D3 plus one or something. Yeah. Just like something just a little extra. Like, do an extra, you know, on the six. So you're, if you're insisting on them rolling that extra die, it's like, oh, I got something as opposed to like, Oh, well, that sucks. Yeah. Feels bad. Yeah. I just I think it's an interesting design space, but I think it needs to go back to the shop, gets workshopped a little bit. Yeah. All right, next page. Winterleaf. So, 
enemy units within three inches. So enemy units within three inches of winter leave units cannot retreat. In addition, if you pick Everdusk from the Season of War battle trait for Winter Leaf Army, enemy units within three inches of a friendly Winter Leaf unit cannot be removed from the battlefield through the effect that would allow them to be set up again later in the turn. That's like anti anti retreat, anti uh, teleport. Yep. And like it's not li limited to a unit of ten or more, like the Night Haunt one is. It's just if they're in combat with you. So, again, I think I, we said this on the Night Hot show. Is that rule is probably not going to matter a lot of games. Right. But the uh, 1 out of 10 games where it matters, it's going to win you the game. Just not letting them be able to retreat. I mean, it's a techie one, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like against the army that really wants to retreat, you randomly kill them. Yeah. And like if, since Rally works on both turns, there's going to be situations where they're like, I can't kill you now. So I'm going to mm -hmm. retreat this turn, and then you stop that. Two. Like, this isn't... It's not a bad ability at all. No. Yeah. But it's It's, it's hard to want to do it, right? Yeah, exactly. It's it's not, like... Like, this is another thing. Like, if you could pick this at game time, it would be a big difference. Yes. Like, if you were like, oh, hang on a second. They rely very heavily on this. I'm going to take this sub-faction to shut that down. Yep. Right. Exactly, yeah. And like but the then again, considering they... is really cool too. Yeah. But then again, considering they want you to paint your army to match the sub faction, in theory. Yeah. Well. I suppose that one's never gonna fly. Yeah. That's true. Um I don't yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like people are gonna run this to really good effects. I just it's not overly exciting to me. No, it, it's certainly not exciting. Yeah, it might it might be really good. I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. Like, but this is also one of those things too, where like the Forp spell ignore, where you're like, it's really good on the units that it's incidental on. Right. Yeah. Yes. Which is it's hard to justify, in my opinion, like taking it over something slot. else. Yeah. 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 All right. What do we got next? Dreadwood. This one's interesting. So it makes your um. Your spite revenants are no longer generically battle line. They have to be in this sub faction to be battle line. Oh, okay, that's kind of weird, but all right. They got better to compensate for that, but that's good. What this do lets you do is um, your uh, your hidden paths, which lets you like move from tree to tree. You can do it twice, but the second time has to be with a the outcast, which is the spite revenants in Drycha. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. They, they just have like a random words. keyword yeah. or whatever. Yep. Okay. Which is actually kind of cool in the lore because they're the ones that like are separated from the Sylvaneth song. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because Alariel decided to remove them from the song and then wiped all of Sylvaneth's memory on why she did that. Oh, boy. Yep. So, I don't know. Why did she do that? <laughs> why did she do that? Yeah. So, like, they have that keyword, and then you can just, like, teleport extra with them in this sub-faction. And the extra teleport now, I... is definitely good. So, I wonder, does Dreicha remember, then? No. She... No? She's cut out, yeah. That's interesting. Oh, well, I figured that that uh, Ilario wiped everyone's memory as to why after she did it, so maybe she wasn't, you know, connected to them, so she couldn't wipe their memory or something. I don't know. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I don't... I think Jiraiya specifically doesn't know why. Oh, okay. But I don't remember the exact reason. Or, like, the exact lore behind it. But yeah, sure, just sure, something sure. about it, yeah. And I, think I assume the book don't say why. I didn't read it yet, because, like, okay. the old book it didn't, but it might in this one. Mm -hmm. Or might, like, talk to it a little bit more. Yeah. But Jiraiya is not a good person. Like, whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah, like, her thing is, like, I want all of not Sylvaneth life to be dead. Oh, that's not ideal. Yeah. yeah. So Maybe like, we can figure out. Because, like, chaos is a bigger priority, but as soon as chaos but is that... done, yep, you're yeah. done. We're coming for you. Yeah. I see. 
Yeah, yeah not not them. not quite so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely not. And then we have one more sub faction, which I really like. I love how you just called that horrifying when chaos exists in this game. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you find that a little funny. I mean, it is horrifying. You're right. But also chaos exists. Yeah, so. also chaos exists. But Bill, she's a fucking mech made out of bees. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But that's fucking cool. Yeah. I Except I don't her. really care for bees. But, you know. I guess it's more accurately hornets. Yeah, I was going to say. I was actually just about to say. It's like, well, actually, more accurately, I don't really mind bees. It's more the wasps and hornets. Yeah. And hornets being the worst of them. Yep. So if it's hornets, nah. Yeah, nah. Nah, bro. <laughs> nah. Yeah, I ain't about that. Miss me with that shit. Yeah. Yeah. The last one is the uh, the spite or the the bug rider faction. Oh, cool! They made a bug rider. Yeah, faction. they get to be battle line there, and then after deployment before the first turn, they get a pregame twelve inch move. That seems rather significant. Yep. So, do you think you run them, run that faction? If you're uh, like, is there a list there? You think? Oh yeah. Because, um, like, the competitive Nurgle faction, just to draw similarities, is the uh, the Puscoil Blightlord one, mm -hmm. where you move your Puscoil Blightlords eight inches, and then you just lock your opponent in their territory on turn one. Oh. And then yeah, you, you sounds... have Bellicor in there to just, like, shut off the one unit that can stop it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I don't think Sylvaneth are going to be able to do that as well as Nurgle, because I don't think they're as survivable as Nurgle, because nothing is. Yeah, correct. But but they're pretty good. Yeah, like, they're decent. And, like, I definitely do think there's going to be a strat where, like, you, this will guarantee you a turn one charge, right? Right, oh, yeah. And, like, you could get For a sure. unit of six and just, like, charge into everything in their front line and then fight it and then just pull them off the table. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, right? you totally can do that, can't yeah. you? And just, like, retreat him back. So yeah. it's just, like, free damage at that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that's a thing. Yeah. Like, uh, that's just... yeah you, could do, you could do that with, like, a uh, triple reinforced unit, too, right? Yeah, because it's a battle line, yeah. Yeah. Would you be able to get everything in combat? You'd probably, like, have two of them out of combat. That's still you're... really good, though. If you're, like, a bounty hunter list. Right? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's actually crazy that sounds like a super good list actually yeah I think so and even and like on the off chance like you clear enough out that you don't want to leave then you don't leave then you just don't yeah, it's yeah. Like, okay I stay <laughs> look at that I just absolutely decimated you yeah all right moving on mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah because like even then they're like four wounds or yeah five wounds of the four up save you right. put Mystic Shield on them, you all defense them. They can last. Yep. They rally on a 5-up. Sounds really good. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely need the, more they, than three boxes of these guys at some point. There's definitely like an Alpha Strike list there. I think so. Yeah. Overall, what do you what do you like for sub-factions, you think? That one? I mean, that one sounds fun, but like not my style at all because I don't spam units usually. Yeah. Um, probably my favorite one is the monster one because I love monsters. Yeah, I think so the, the first monster one we one's over. actually going to be really good. Yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be a really good list. I think the Karnoth one is probably one I'm going to run a lot. I think I'm going to run mm -hmm. uh, Gnarl Root, the wizard one, a lot too. That's definitely your style. Yeah, yeah. But like, there's just four of these that like immediately sound exciting, and I want to play them to me. Wait. And, like, I think are really good. And, like, I, granted, a couple of them are narrow. Yeah. But like, like, the last one is definitely narrow. Yeah. But, like, it's like a thing in and of itself if you want to do it. I gotta read something on that last one. Oakenbro. So, it only works on Tree Lord, Tree Lord Ancient, and Spirit of Durthu. So, it doesn't work on Alariel. Because that would have changed things a lot, too. If it did work. Oh, better. for... Yeah. Well, I think I would run... That sounds like the list where I make... Spirit of Dirt through the, you know... The general. General. Yeah. Run them ethereal. Mm-hmm. And 
Uh, which which artifact do you run there? I can't remember them all well enough. Um, the Greenwood Gladius gives your Spirit of Dare through D3 extra attacks. That sounds so pretty fucking good. With his flat six damage attacks that yeah. will last until he dies. I think that's the way. That sounds like it. Oh man, you just run out just an absolutely nasty Spirit of Dare through. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. I like that list. Yeah, I do too. I don't know if it's good, but it sounds... That sounds like a fun thing to do. It doesn't... To try out. It, it can't be bad. Right? Like, it can't, can't be embarrassing. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, like it might four, not be the 14... list. <laughs> yeah. But, like, having to do, like... Like, let's say, like... I guess he'd be weak to mortal wounds, but doing 14 mortal wounds is still, like... That's a task. And I did the math, too. And if... Yeah, Lady of Vines ends up getting her a 5-up ward spell off. Um, a th 14 wounds, 3-up ethereal will tank a double unit of fulminators. That's crazy. On average, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Which, so that can't be bad. Yeah, that, that's not, like, laughable. And, like, of course you no. have to get your um Lady of Vines cast off to, like... Because it, it, it works just so that it's, like, 15 damage without it. And, like, 11 and a half with it. If I remember the numbers right. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, that would make sense. So it's it's important. Probably. But, yeah, yeah like, that, I think that's going to be That's already a list, list I want to make. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not me personally, because, well. But, like, you'd love to see I don't it. Know, yeah. But, yeah, but, like, if I just had access to, like, build any list I wanted, that, that'd be, that'd be mm -hmm. where I start. Absolutely. And then the Seasons of War I talk so much about. There's four of these. And there's one for each season. So we have the burgeoning, which is like summer. So everything within nine inches of a wildwood or an overgrown terrain feature has a six-up ward. Do you remember playing in second edition with Vinny? And like how no. horribly upset he was about like how he could do absolutely nothing about mortal wounds in that army? Yep. There you go. It's something. Yeah, six up board's not bad. No, nope. it's not a five up board like some of these other armies have, but like. Yeah, but I mean, well, uh, Deepkin's five up board's like very conditional. Yep. And like Nurgle is just you give up so much to have. I it. mean, Nurgle's Nurgle, right? Yep. Yeah. Exactly, and then like everything else is like a six up. So yep. you can have a six up too. <laughs> you can have a six up board too. Yeah. Yeah, and like. I think a lot of people say that a six up ward is nothing. I mean, I'm not like the biggest fan of it myself, but it is something. Yeah, I I just I don't think it's nothing, but I don't think it's like amazing either, you know? Yeah, it's not like the most exciting thing in the world, but hey, it's a thing. It it'll save you it'll save you a sixth of the wounds you take. Yeah. Right? Like pretty easy math right there. Mm-hmm. And it's like one of those things too. Is like you played against me enough to know that like it does actually add up. Yeah, you can randomly spike it too, and just like mm -hmm. you should have been dead, and you're just not. Okay. And I think it, I think there's more value to this the more bodies you have, the more wounds you have too. Because mm -hmm. I think like if you're doing like a very elite army, the six up board isn't that important, right? But I think. Like, if you were doing mass dryads, this might be the way to go. But there's other options for that, too, that I really like. This isn't yeah, my first it. pick. Yeah, yeah let's do the others. Um, the Reaping, which is like our fall, is um, add three inches to the range in which you can use um the places of power and from the Woodland Depths battle trait. So, the teleport out and teleport back in is mm -hmm. 12 inches instead of 9 inches. Okay, that's kind of cool. I don't know how to evaluate that one really because I could see it's that really one hard being to. really good or really bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, Depends on the risk, I'd say. Yeah, I think it's like if you have like maybe that's like if you have like your unit of thirty, it would be way easier to get it within twelve than within nine. That's right. definitely true. So yeah, that might that one might just be secretly insanely good, like how the turtle and. I don't know, Deepkin, like, the command trait for the three extra inches is, like, secretly, obscenely good. Huh. Or not command trait, the uh, mount trait. Yeah. But, yeah, so this one could be good, but I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, I guess burgeoning yeah. is spring and reaping is summer. And then dwindling is fall. But yeah. Well, you know what's funny is I actually kind of like them not being like, they don't need to be Earth seasons. Which I kind of like that they have different names even. Yeah, because it could just like, be totally trying... different. Like, I do actually remember seeing this these in the article on the community site, although we didn't know what all of them were at yeah. the time. But, like, I was trying to make that match, and then, like, as we started talking about today, I'm like, you know what? They don't need to match. There's no reason for them to. Yeah, so let's stop doing the comparisons then. I'll stop it. Yep. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. I like it. Well, I mean, yeah. you can if you want. Like, I'm not saying yeah. it's, like, a bad thing to try, but I just kind of like I just kind of like the fact totally that you don't different. have to. Yeah. 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 I like, yeah. But I, I like this system a lot, too. The only complaint I have is I wish it was, like, the uh, rituals from Deepkin, where you could just pick it before the game instead of, like... Yeah. Yeah, but... That's... Yeah, that, that would be cool as well. I, but, I mean, I think that just goes back to, like, the idea we've had all day. Yeah. It's like, man, wouldn't it be cool if you could pick these at game time? For, yeah, that's like, true. Everything. But, like, as they are now, they're just, like, functionally not any different than a sub-faction. It's true. Like, yep. I don't know if that's actually a problem. Yeah, it's still cool that you get, like, two of them. You can do a little oh, mix yeah. and match and stuff. And, like, build your own sub-factions. A lot of fun. Right. Yeah. What are the last two? Dwindling? I like this one. I think this is the one I take the most in my list. Is uh, You can reroll one cast unbind or dispelling as long as your wizard is within nine inches of a forest. Oh, that sounds crazy. Yep. It's way better than the others so far. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Like, I definitely could see an argument for the uh, six up ward. And, yeah. Like, you're drowning in, like, chip damage everywhere, or, like, mortal wounds everywhere. I mean, wh what guys are the ones that, like. If you're healing one a turn for your monsters, you're not running it in that one. So. I guess. It's yeah. really only if you're running a horde, right? That you want that? Which, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. But, like. But even then, like, is there just. Is there a spell in there that you want to cast a, for a horde anyway? I don't even know. No, I guess not, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, like, I definitely... This is the one I gravitate towards, too, naturally. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, definitely. I think the one... I think you're going to like this last one the best, though. Okay. It's, um... Ever Dusk. So it's a... You subtract three inches from the range in which you can use the places of power and woodland depths trait. However, Sylvaneth units within six inches get a exploding sixes. I I don't really remember the first bit, like what what all that meant. Oh, so like the teleport ranges are six inches instead of nine inches, basically. Oh, so it gets narrower. Yeah, it gets oh, narrower, okay. but you get exploding sixes on every attack in your army. Huh. Honestly, I think I take in, in the list in the theoretical list I'm building. I take the. Uh... The, the casting the one. extra cast one or the reroll cast one yeah yeah i think it's still because you were saying that there's a spell that's really good for that and i can't remember it man i don't i'm trying to remember this whole army all at once it's hard to do so <laughs> let's talk about that list a little bit actually that's interesting instead of just reading the book so is this the tree lord list we're talking about yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so throne of vines is the one that heals once a turn right you might want to reroll a cast of that Yep. If you bring definitely. Lady of Vines, she's got the five up board bubble. And just seeing that five you failed up board. it. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And like the thing is like you can cast that and then if it goes off, great. And if it doesn't, you can be like, all right, I use my reroll now. Right. Yeah. And rerolling the dispel and the enemy purple sun is probably gonna be big. Yep. Yeah, I yeah, I think that's the go to one. And like I think I it is. talking about yeah. it in like terms like that, but I mean, I think we yeah. we've been so high on the rest of the stuff that that's okay. Yeah, I just like I definitely think there's room for creativity there because yeah. I definitely think we could be undervaluing the reaping a lot, and just like the extra range on the teleporting could be clutch, but I don't think so. Wait, you were saying extra range on the teleport? I thought it shrunk. The uh, one that gives you exploding exploding sixes shrinks it. Oh, okay. Yeah, Everdust shrinks it, but the Reaping increases it to 12. Oh, 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 right, right. That's what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that one could just be deceptively good. Right, right. And I think there's going to be a point where, like, you're going to want the five or the six up ward army wide. 
And I think there's yeah. some people who are going to really want the exploding sixes. And I think actually on the Alpha Strike list with the uh, bugs, you probably want the exploding sixes if the point is to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, because you don't actually care about um, yeah being in range because you're more like go in than like blink out type of thing. Also, if you're a Kernoth Hunter heavy list, Kernoth Hunters in Lady of Vines counts as being within range of a tree. Right, yes. So you don't even need to worry about like the range if you're heavy on those. Oh, because they have their own range on them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're also trees. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I think it's not that cut and dry. But I think if you don't know what you're doing, I think the casting just... one is the best one. Right. Especially if you're just running some... Yeah. Because the spells are so good and... Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's just the generic, like, all man's choice one. Yeah. You, you, you won't be going wrong by taking that, assuming yeah. you have, like, a caster or two. And I think the other ones, like, if you have a good reason to take it, I'm sure it's the right choice. Right, yeah. That's how I would put it, overall. Yeah. But yeah, like, I just, I really like that, like, option to, like, build your own sub-faction, like, with a couple traits. Yeah. It's really fun. There's a bunch of different things going on there. Yep. Yeah. All right, I think that's it for the uh, sub faction and the legions and stuff. So, I think we're on to war scrolls now. Oh no, not yet. Grand strategies, battle tactics. I don't really care to read these because we, you know, our opinion. We hate these. We don't think they're healthy yep. for the game. But, Is there anything that's like stupid? Um, they're stupid in the uh, weak way, as in you completely this battle tactic if you did four out of the five battle tactics from this book specifically. Oh, that's dumb. Yeah, and kill an enemy unit within 12 inches of a wildwood. That's kind of funny because you can summon a wildwood and then be like, oh, he's got a knife, get him! <laughs> <laughs> like, that play pattern's funny. He's invading the wildwood! <laughs> yeah. You just put it next to me, he's invading the wildwood, get him! <laughs> oh, I don't know if you saw this comic, but it was like somebody was like hunting a rabbit, and it's like, Man, he's so defenseless, I feel bad for him. And then he, like, throws a knife next to his feet. He's like, he's got a knife! Kill him! <laughs> That's what I was quoting. Oh, God. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, man. <laughs> I like that play pattern, but, like, other than that, like, no. Yeah. I think when It's you... funny, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, if we don't... Yeah. If you're a tournament organizer, I just say get rid of these because I think it breaks so much parity. Especially with, like, yeah. the core book one's so hard to get now. It makes these like, right. way yeah. more prevalent. Yeah. yeah. But we can sing about that till the cows go home. Um, we, we have not changed our mind about that. Yeah. Core battalions? We have one. And it's uh, two Tree Lord Ancients. And you can have up to four of them. And then one Tree Lord, and you can have up to three of them. And it gives you Strategist, which is the extra command point once per game. Um, I don't know why they printed this, to be honest. Because, um, yeah, Tree Lord Ancients, they're, like, exactly good for one model. But you need two? You need two in here, and they're, like, 360 apiece. Uh -huh. And the Tree Lord's, like, 260, so that's, like, a thousand points for, like, an extra command point once a game. Like, no, no one's taking no, this. No, we're, we're not doing that. Especially considering how good the the latest general handbook ones are. Yeah. You're going to want to take for like, I don't various things. Even, like, if this was a Magnificence, then, like, maybe. And it's like, right. oh, and then it solves that issue I was talking about where it's like, oh, our, our big stuff makes it really hard to get, like, Command Entourage. Yeah, but no. Yeah, I, yeah, I just, there's no value in this. They, they, were they, they, what they... I can I can envision what they would have said on the on the community say it's like oh and look if you want to run only trees look you got a core battalion for that too yep and it's like well but you made it not exciting yeah and yeah we're not doing it mm -mm. and like it could have been cool if like clan elder was instead of just tree lord ancient it was just like a character tree lord so you could have like a clan elder like you could have a tree lord ancient a spirit of dirt and a regular tree. And get a magnificent. Yeah, that would be cool. That would have been a great battalion. Yeah. But yeah. 
It's almost like they don't want to add these to the game, and then, like, corporate tells them to, and then they just make them bad, so they don't actually add to the game. It's. I, I feel like they were... They had an idea there for doing it, and... And then they, but they decided they wanted to be careful with it because they didn't want to like break things. Yeah. And then, and then they didn't break things, but they also just waste paper. Yeah, exactly. But like, some of these are cool in some of the books. I just wish more, yeah. and more you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, I wish they were kind of relevant sometimes. Yeah. But then again, I prefer they just didn't exist more than I wish they were cool. I think, I think. so too. Yeah. I think the way to, like, bring flavor to the army is just, like, actually investigating the heroic action step. Because most of the time I'm like, oh, I'll get a command point, fine. Yeah, you could do a lot, they could do a lot more with that. And the armies where, like, that's not the way you play, like, Fire Slayers and Skaven, is awesome. Right. And, like, it feels so cool to have those options. Yeah, and, like, the new Demon Prince and Slaves of Darkness whenever that comes out. Yep. Absolutely. All right, now we're at War Scrolls. So, Alariel. Remember in the Echoes of Doom show we did together, we talked about the War Scroll for Alariel? Yeah, and it's just as different. Yeah, this one's different. different. Yeah. So, it's very weird. I don't know okay. why that happened, but. So, let's see. Her damage is pretty much the same from Broken Realm's Kragnos. She has the more generous bracketing at six wounds instead of three, like monsters have been getting lately. That's good. Which is nice. Um, she lost her charge impact hits, and it became a monstrous action of basically stomp does d6 mortal wounds against one wound things. Oh, that's weird, but yeah. okay. So It's fine, I guess. Yeah, she went up 100 points. She didn't add to her summoning list, which the version that's we sad. found did. Yeah, which is sad. Yeah. Like, that would have been sweet if she did. Yeah, that- yeah, that's definitely a missed opportunity. Yeah, she had a plus one to wound command ability that's gone. And now what she has is a once per game ability that makes all terrain overgrown. For the oh, turn. wow. Yeah. Oh, for the turn. But still, that's really cool, though. Yeah, like, I think I think that's going to be, like, deceptively very strong. Yeah. Because, like, like, we saw with all the season stuff, too. Like, especially if we took the Exploding Six one, or something like that, or the Ward. There's just going to be a turn where you really need it, you pop it. And then you have, like, a hyper turn, basically. Right. Like, I think that's going to be a really powerful play pattern. And so her spell didn't change, but it's worth talking about. So it's casting value 7, and you roll equal to the uh, casting... You roll a number of dice equal to the casting roll that you made. So let's say like you rolled like an 8, you roll 8 dice. Okay. And each 3 up, it deals a mortal wound to a unit. And if you kill that unit, they turn into a tree. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. But the reason why I say it's worth mentioning here is because like one of the seasons lets you re-roll, which is cool. And then one of them lets you roll 3 dice. So you could right. just stack up like your 3 dice, pick the higher 2. And if you didn't like the roll, you could re-roll it from there. So it's, like, pretty easy to get 11 here. Or something like that, right? And, like, an 11 dice each 3 up is a mortal wound. So, wait, you... Oh, is is it you roll 2 and take the highest for the the roll 3 dice one? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought it was just roll 3 dice. No, roll 3, take the high... Or, yeah, roll 3, take the higher 2. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. But, like, I like that ability. Like, I like that combination there. So that's cool. And then also, like, she could charge in retreat. And, um... Yeah, charge in fight. And then fall back with the uh, fade and fire. Or fade and strike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that's a cool play pattern, too. So I think she did get a lot from the army. I think the lore spells are better, too, than they were. And she did, and we did confirm that she keeps all, she has all lore spells, right? Yeah, I think it says it. Yeah, it knows all the lores from the Deep Woods in addition to other spells she knows. Yep. Sweet. And the one thing we didn't talk about yet is she has a once per game ability where basically you take the round number and you add it to a roll. And on a six up, you resurrect her anywhere on the battlefield outside of nine with eight wounds left. 
<laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah. So basically, the way it works is like turn five, you she automatically comes back. Now right. turn four, you need a two up. Turn three, you need a four up. Yeah. Okay, hang on, hang on. We got to go back now. What are the grand strategies for? We didn't actually go over them. Is there one where like having a Lariel around in some way would get it? The end of the battle. Complete this grand strategy. If the model picked to be your opponent's general is slain by attacks made by outcasts, nope. Nope. You complete this grand strategy if there are friendly Awakened Wildwood in each quarter of the d battlefield and all enemy units more than six inches from Awakened Wildwoods. Nope. Okay. That's garbage. Okay. Yep. yep no, those are worthless. Yeah. That's okay. Yep. Anyway. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. No. But yeah. Um, I think that's a good ability. I don't think it saves her from being like shot off the table turn one by like bow snakes or something like that, right? Right. She, she doesn't have any wards or anything? She does not have a ward save. Okay, that's pretty Unless rough. Unless you're um, burgeoning and she's that's within true. nine of a tree and she's got a six up. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I don't, I don't see that, but like... She's... Like, maybe that's all she needs, but... yeah. Did Ragnar I... suddenly become playable with a six up ward? Like, did that make a huge difference for him? Um, it was really nice for him, but I think what made him playable was the three d six charge. Yeah, because he I had agree. no delivery method, and now he has like one of the best delivery buffs in the game. Right. Yeah. But the ward is definitely nice, and like the games I played against him, the ward kept him alive. And like, oh, wards something. Get... yeah, the wards get better on more wounds you have. And she's it got cut up here, but she's a sixteen wound. Okay. With a three up save. Right. So like, there's definitely armies that can't deal with her. And also, she heals two d six, a turn. A turn. A turn. I think it's your wow. hero phase. Yeah. Sure, but. Yeah. So if you don't actually 6 kill a lot, her, she does two d six. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty crazy, actually. Yeah. One thing she did lose was she used to heal everybody within 30 inches, D3. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have she doesn't that know. anymore, but the army just heals one to everybody, so that's fine. Right. Now, does does that heal one bring back models? No. Oh. Yeah, she never brought back models either, but... I see yeah, I was, just, I was yeah. just curious if it if it did. Because, mm -hmm. like, that just doesn't work at all on, like... Dryad holes, um, yeah. Dryads, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, and it's like it's a little bit better than it reads, but not amazing. Right. The real core of the rule is that you can teleport between them, not the healing, but the healing's nice. Yeah. Overall, like she's no Marathi. She's probably better than Nagash. But like yeah. I, I feel like if you like her and you want to run her, I think you could do well with her. I'm not excited about her, to be honest. I mean, that's totally fair. I don't think she's good. I think she's fine. Is my assessment, but I'm I'm excited to be proved wrong about that to be honest, but I right. just don't think I'm gonna. Yeah. No, I got you. Yeah. Do you do you agree or do you think I'm overreacting? I mean, how many points was she again? 840? Oh my god. Um It's a big ask. It's a big ask. I mean, she sounds very survivable. Yeah. Healing that much is is a is a big deal. I think things that can like mortal wound blast at a huge range will get her. Right. And, like at least Nagash has like the four board to that. Yeah. Like she has clear like hard weaknesses, unfortunately. And those weaknesses aren't exactly terribly uncommon in the meta, I think. Yeah. Although maybe they will be more uncommon now. I don't know. We don't really know what's going on. Yeah, I guess the storm yeah. volt volley getting nerfed to being in a minimum sized unit. Um, kind of helps her too. Yeah. Because that's what her weakness was. Yeah. But like I think you just hand the game to the daughter's a cane player. For example. Yeah, you probably do. Yeah. But like I think I think she is yeah. I think she is plenty playable in just like if you're playing your buddy and neither of you are running tournament lists, probably fine. I think she's even great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I think you'll you'll win a lot of games with her. Mm -hmm. Like your your opponent probably won't be able to do enough damage. Yeah, I agree. So now is that a is that a good or a bad place for a model to be? It being um, like 
This guy is the terror of the casual table, but not even playable tournament wise. Probably bad. Probably bad, I think. Yeah. But I don't even know if it's unkillable in casual. Oh, I'm not saying it is. Yeah. I, I that that's like the exaggeration of like right. like I could see that being the case. Like not that it is the case, but like I could see it being, yeah. Yeah. I think she's got legs, but I don't think she's amazing. You know? Is my overall honest assessment of her. Yeah. Alright, let's see. It's oh, it's already nine. Okay. We'll speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Lady of Vines. She's not new from uh Echoes of Doom, but she's still like my favorite thing in this whole army. Right. I Yeah, love her. she seems really five cool. aboard bubble, decent attacks. Two cast wizard, and then all the wizard buffs that you can bring in an army affect her. Mm-hmm. Too. Which is sweet. Yeah, great. I I think I brought her every game so far, and she's gonna and be really hard. Been disappointed. Yeah, it's gonna be a really hard <laughs> to ask for me to not keep bringing her. That's yeah, fair. Yeah, I love her. She looks so cool. Drake awesome. didn't change too much. So her, she went from like six attacks. She used to bracket, and now she doesn't. So that's a big thing. That is big, yeah. But her starting attacks went from six to four. And they're three okay. ups instead of four ups. And they're rend two instead of rend one. Yeah, that's just a math problem. I don't know what's better. I'm not doing oh, that. Top right of my now. head. Yeah. Yeah. She gives one to wounds for spite revenants, which I'm not sure I care about that too much because they do most of their damage on sixes to hit our mortal wounds. Okay. Um let's see. And then she still has the mercurial aspect where she has a uh, attack with um yeah she has 10 ranged attacks and 10 melee attacks but you can double one of them at the beginning of each hero phase so like you usually probably do the make her have 20 ranged attacks which is just hilarious yeah yeah and um they used to be like four threes no rend one damage now they're three three rend one one damage that's pretty solid in six what's the range on that again uh 12 Okay, so not too terribly long. Yeah, but she teleports too because she's in this army. Right. Level one That's wizard. True. Yeah. And they do mortal wounds on sixes. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah. She... Is is the mortal wounds on sixes new too? No, it's not. Okay. That's always been a... All right. Yeah. But honestly, like, she's 335. I think she was a little hard to ask before. I think she's good enough to run, for sure. I just don't think she's the strongest thing in this army. But I think she's fun. It's, yeah, it, it sounds like the, like... If you like her and you're a casual player, like, yeah, by all means. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah, I just and wonder if... if, like, her mortal wound output on the ranged attack could have a place in this meta, too. It could. She's yeah. a war master, I missed that. Oh, that's... oh, does that mean she's a, she's a general in addition? Yep. Olivia oh, that's Vines cool, is a actually. Master too, also. Yeah, that's awesome. Wait, so can you run both of those in the same list and then yeah. have like three generals? Yep. That's hilarious. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. For some reason I find that ability fun and interesting. It's really not that interesting, but like, it's so cool. It's just like, it just makes sense that like, those guys are your... Like, would be a general anyway. I think it's just, like, it's the biggest thing of Ludo narrative dissonance where you're like, oh, I'm not going to bring my faction leader as the general because there's, like, negative incentive to, you know? Exactly, yeah. And now, like, So they were like, mm -hmm. hey, they, they are your general too because that just makes sense. Yeah. It might actually be a nerf because then people can get, like, Slay the Warlord or whatever easier. Yeah, so it, Slay the Warlord's not a thing anymore. That's no, true. So, like, what that lets you do is you can issue commands within 18 inches instead of 12. Which, yeah, not, it's not nothing. It's true. And yeah. then there's a new com or a new battle tactic, which is have your general kill a unit with attacks. So this opens up the option of what general could kill what, too. Yeah, you could be like, it's like, oh, I have a lot of options to get that. Yep. Yeah. So it's definitely a buff, but like it's it's more of a fluff thing anything. Yeah. Which is yep, that great. makes sense. Yeah. 
Because, like, yeah, it's just so, like, annoying to not have your, like, god be your general. Yeah. It's like, and then, like, you don't want to lose anything. To, like, right, make, yeah, because, make like, more sense. it's yeah. just a straight nerf if you make it make more sense at that yep. point. Yep. Fantastic. Let's see. Um, let's keep going. War Song Revenant, he didn't change much. Yeah, the only thing that happened was he lost um, the ability to cast everything in the army. I'd say that's a big change. Yeah. It's funny, though, because I think the reason why you brought him was his unique War Scroll spell. So it's a 9-inch okay. range, and it hits everything within 9 inches, equal to the cast roll. And then it deals a... Okay, so let me just succinctly say this, rather. So, range of 9... You roll dice equal to the amount of the cast roll. And for each five up, you deal mortal wound to an enemy within nine. So, it's just a mortal wound bomb. Yeah. And, and then, a good one at that. Yeah, and you have, like, ways to re-roll or roll extra dice in this army. Yep. And, like, that used to be, like, artifact options, and now it's just, like, your sub-faction. Right. So, like, that's way better. Too, so, like... That's kind of cool that he got that. I, I I guess it's fine that he lost. Um, He knows all the spells. It definitely makes him way worse. You're right. But, like, this is the reason why I think getting the uh, enhancement for extra spells is pretty big for this army. Yeah. Where it normally would not be a choice before because he had them all. Right. He is 305 points, 7 wounds, four, 5 up save. Four up ward. So he's pretty survivable. Four up ward is huge. Yeah. yeah. And he gets plus one to cast the spell and unbind. That's pretty freaking sweet. Yep. He doesn't suck. Yeah, overall he's very, I would say powerful, yeah. Alright, I'm going to interrupt you for a second here and just, just to tell you that Sons of Horus color scheme is like the best thing ever. Yeah. And I love it. Oh, it looks so good. Right. So you finished Isn't it? that awesome? That's awesome. No, no, no. no. I, I need to I need to still shade and layer, but like the basic color scheme there. Yeah, it's so <clears> cool. Oh man, I love it. Yeah. This is the correct choice by far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm I'm glad you're liking that model. Yeah, like, he's he's just so cool. Range. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm happy for you. Alright, sorry for the interruption. Yeah, that's okay. I think I said all I need to say about him. I Yeah, I like him. I, he's still going to be in a lot of lists. I just don't think he's an auto-include anymore. That's fair. Which is a good place to be, even, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Alright. What's next? Arch Revenant. So he's kind of cool. He's um 120 points. So you'll notice in this book and the Skaven book, where like every other book they're getting rid of that like plus one attack command ability. On everybody. He still has it. And the Skaven still have it too. Interesting. I don't know why. Maybe they relate to the memo on that one or something. But It makes me wonder if um, the Chaos Lord and Foot's going to keep the uh, att uh, extra attack command ability. Yeah, exactly. Cause I, it might. We thought like all the command abilities were going away. Yeah. And like they're not. Because like Soul Blight, like, the whole army's built around that command ability. Right. So I'm like, oh, this isn't really yeah. a third edition battle tome anymore if it's like built around that. But like if they're gonna keep it in some places, that's fine. Yep. Yeah. Um he's got a fistful of okay attacks, four, three, three, minus two, one, D three, four, three, no rend, one damage. Or two damage. So he's an okay foot hero. Yeah. Actually Nothing pretty too good. terribly exciting, yeah. but for a hundred and twenty point hero, that's pretty good in combat. That is pretty to good. To be honest. Yeah. And then he gives Kurnoth Hunters within 12 inches plus one to wound. Okay. And that's both shooting and uh, melee. So I think if you want to bring Kurnoths, you bring at least one of him. Yeah. And like that makes the bow Kurnoths like threes, twos. Like that's really good. That is really good. Yeah. And he's got one last ability where whenever he fights, you pick at the beginning of the combat phase. If he's in combat, you pick to tilt his shield up or to point his spear better, basically. And if you point his spear better, he gets 
one attack to his glaive. And if you put his shield up, he gets a four up ward. So you put his shield that's, up. Yep. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, overall, I think it's very obvious based on what the list you're running, if you want him or not. Yeah. If you're running sure. huge dryad blocks, the plus one attack's probably great. If you're running Kernoth, yep. you obviously want the plus one to wound passively. Right. It's like the best thing in the Night Haunt book. You want it here, too. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Spirit of Durthu. 14 wounds, 5-inch move, 3, up save. So, all the... Yeah, he has a range attack, range 15, 6 attacks that degrades, but not if you're in the right sub-faction. 4 is 3 is minus 1, or minus 1, 2 damage. So, that's a... An upgrade from his last shooting attack. Not by much, but it is. I think they were one damage before. Now they're two, so that's cool. Uh -huh. yeah. His sword is three attacks, threes, threes, minus two, six damage. That degrades. But again, you're six open damage. Bro, so it's not degrades. So it's not. Exactly. Yeah. And then Massive Impaling Talons is um two attacks, threes, twos that degrade. SVL, how you doing, buddy? Thanks. Hey, for the tier one. It's good to see you again. Nice and a nice two fifty in my bank account. Thank you, man. <laughs> I appreciate it. But yeah, so let's see. Spirit of Girthu here. Yeah, twos, twos, minus two, three. So that's a much better change because it used to be like two attacks with no rend and one damage, and mm -hmm. then like sixes to hit were d six mortal wounds. So you just see it turn into more consistent damage in all the tree lords. Which is honestly good. Yeah, I like that way better. Anyway. Yeah. And like that's not that's a that's a good profile too, like two attacks, twos twos minus two three. Like that's yeah. killing something. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that one. And then his special abilities. All the tree lords get this, so I won't repeat it every time. But they have a new monstrous action that gives a unit fight last on a three up. Okay, that re that replaced the stomp, right? Yep. So, the pros and cons of that, obviously, is that the con is that it's a monstrous action and not just a thing they do. Yep. The pros is that it's on a 3 instead of a 4. That's actually pretty big math. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, and I, I like that better anyway, too, because if like, they're incentivizing you to spam this, and just having strike last everywhere would kind of be very gross. Yeah, I... I think most abilities are better when you can't spam, spam. them, right? Like, like I feel like ev almost every list is like you're abusing something in a way that's not supposed to be that mm -hmm. wasn't really intended, right? Like all the best lists, and a lot of the time it's spamming like something. Yeah, and so I think anything to reduce spam, yeah, is is a good thing. Absolutely. Because it, it'll, it'll make the game play more as, you know, intended instead of becoming a whoops, this is too good because you can spam it. Just want to say hi to a first time chatter. Benny Operation Sabi, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for jumping in. Hey! Talking about Sylvaneth. If you didn't pick it up. <laughs> but yeah. We got uh, we got some painting going on too that yeah. we normally do. We got, uh, I got my Gossamids. Yeah, and you got the Praetor going. <laughs> I got the Praetor going. Uh, yeah, cool. Funnily enough, we're almost exclusively in Age of Sigmar channel, but I just really like this model, so here we are. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, like, the content we talk about is Age of Sigmar, and then yeah. we just paint what we want, really. Yep. And then the Praetor was just, he saw that, and you're like, oh, I really want to paint that. Yeah, so it's like, I just love it. this model, so yep. here we are. Perfect. Oh. But yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, overall, like, what you missed is we're very high on this book right now. Yeah. Seems very good. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going over the units. To Breacher for Sons of Horus, yeah. We were just talking about how much we love Sons of Horus, too. Like I, I just love the amazing. color scheme. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I probably play this guy in uh, a bunch of bunch of people I know nearby to me play play 40k, not Horus Heresy, so we're gonna we're, this guy's gonna be something. And we'll figure it out if and when I ever actually make an army for it. But, you know, we'll get there eventually, maybe. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and then... So, 
Yeah, what else? Oh, yeah, he gets one extra attack if he's within range of a Wildwood or an o Overgrown. Terrain feature. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, so he's four attacks with his six damage weapon. Yo. And then you put the Gladius on him and he gets D3 extra. He's 370 points. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. fine. So <laughs> I'm still running him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, this is what I'm talking about when I said, like, I think the initial opinions were pretty poor received because it seems like a nerf. Because he's not that different from what he was. Mm. Other than the, um... Yeah, so he's not that different. It used to be two extra attacks from being within a tree instead of one. And then he went up 50 points. Sure. But there's a lot. There's, I guess our our point to that would be there's a lot of extra stuff to consider. Yeah. I think like maybe you have to build around him, and I think you do. Yeah. But I think it's worth it if you do. Exactly. And I think the other thing that's really lost on people is like when attack profiles slightly change, and it happened with the turtle too, and even we missed it entirely, was like how much more damage the turtle does than it did right. before. Yeah. And I think like the attack profiles changing are a lot more damage. And I think the bracketing, especially in the sub faction, that makes it so he basically doesn't bracket. Yeah. It right. to so much more damage that's pretty easy to miss on the first read. Yeah. So I think overall, he got way, way better. Yeah, like, I would be super excited to run him. Yeah, AOS is too competitive for you, aren't you? Interesting, because I think my the most common version I hear is that the 40k group is the too competitive one, but I think it's that's just a that local you area have different thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. The models are great though. And Bill and I are just like way more into fantasy than sci fi. Yeah. So that's like what really brought us here. Like especially me. Oh, me too. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same deal. Yeah, so like this is just what we like to do. And like I just can wrap my head around this game way easier too. The stratagems are a little much in forty K for me. But Yeah. I mean, this game definitely has its own its own fair, oh, it's a steep fair share of yeah yeah for, for sure. sure yeah I'm not gonna deny yeah. that but yeah I've definitely found that like the uh, like anybody I've played with has always been like super nice and casual about it and mm -hmm. we just rolled dice had fun and it wasn't super competitive or anything mm -hmm. but and, I mean that it could entirely be that your area is just the people around you are just really competitive so yeah. There's a bunch of different people. And they act in different ways, so I get it. Yeah. How is uh how is uh thirty K by the way? I, I don't actually know too too much about it, if I'm being I, honest. Yeah, I don't know either, but that he's been playing for seven years, so that would be interesting. Yeah. To hear about that. Yeah. Let's see. And how do you like the, the new rules set if you got the chance to play? Yeah, I'm curious <laughs> about that too, how it compares. Yeah. But yeah, Tree Lord Ancient. So this one on the surface, it seems, like, pretty dour. Okay. So, it's 360 points where it was 280. The only thing that really changed is the runes profile, and the attacks changed. So, like, sweeping blows on this used to be three attacks at D6 damage. Now it's five attacks at two. Oh, that's, and, like, not, that's not ideal. No. Two, two is mm -hmm. something you would be like, oh, that sucks that I rolled a two. Yeah. The massive impaling talons change, so like it's instead of like on a six d six mortal wounds, it's just flat three damage. Uh -huh. That changes there too, and I, th yeah. so I think mathematically it's something around like thirty percent more damage on average, with like a much lower chance to spike. Okay, but I think it's hard to like read it as not spiking until you play it a bunch and then you just do two damage with it the entire game. Yeah, you know. And the big thing that it lost was it used to have a command ability that was a, a bubble of plus one to save. Oh, yeah. And that's it, lost, it just straight lost that. Straight lost it, yeah. Oh, boy. And then went up almost 100 points. Oh, my goodness gracious me. So, yeah, it sucks on the surface a lot. Yeah. However, let me, let me propose something to you. Tell me what you think. All right. Make him your general. You give him Gnarled Warrior. He's a level one caster. You give him Vestral Gem. You give him uh 
uh, Throne of Vines. So he's healing one wound every phase, auto casting it. Can't unspot. Can't deny it. Yep. And then he's a three up, unrendable. That's healing like twelve damage a battle round. I mean, that does sound pretty silly. Like I think that's the only way you're going to see him run, and I think that way is going to be very powerful. Yeah. Because he's just a self-sustained anchor, and he does do more damage now. Like quite a bit. But like. That's not why you ever brought him in the old book. Right. And but, I've... hey, maybe now now that is the reason to bring him, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't blame anyone for being upset about that change, right? right? Because it just completely transformed what this unit does entirely. Yeah. And you know what, though? Like, that's probably fine. I think in a world where, like, we got all these kind of buffs, like a plus one aura, or plus save. one save aura is probably too much. Yeah, it could be. In the world that you're designated to save stack. Yep. And like in the stuff where all your stuff got like way more durable too. Uh -huh. Stuff where your stuff in a world where your stuff got more durable too, is what I meant to say. But yeah. Yeah, I get it, but I don't think it's the I don't think the sky's falling for this guy. I think he's just different now. Yeah, he's just different. You're gonna do different things with him. Yeah, but I still He's actually my general for Path to Glory with that exact build. And that's why he took no damage. Yeah, and it's so funny. Yeah, that sounds it. Yeah, and like I said, like if you get the five up board off, he survives a Fulminator hit. Right, and then which is right insane. Up. Yeah. Yep. yep. So, like, I think he's good. It's just different. Yep, just different. <sighs> and then the Tree Lord, which is the one that can be battle line. And so, he's got the same attack profile, which is about the 30% more damage than before. The better stomp. That Or, the not the better stomp, but the monstrous action that makes you fight last. And he's got this new ability where if he deals damage in the combat phase, the thing he deals damage to can't pile in that turn. Oh. Oh, that's weird. I think that's sweet. Yeah. No, I don't disagree with you. It's definitely weird. Yeah, especially with like the, the fight last. And then you just like kind of touch them in the edge. And then you just make it so they can't pile in at all. Yeah, and they just like can't do damage. Yeah. I huh. Yeah, 260 points for that. And I think okay. another thing too is people are severely underestimating like the bracketing and how much that matters. Yeah, it, it really does. Yeah. Especially with Oakenbro, where like they don't bracket basically. Yeah, they they just they just don't. Did, yeah. Did, were you, were you thinking about bracketing? You, you're not. It's okay. Just don't. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and stop that now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I. It's fantastic. Yep. Um, I yeah, I think the the uh, be, this is a battle line. That army is going to be very very good, or at least yeah. very fun. I agree. Yeah, and I can't wait to try that. But I want to do all three battle line, but one or two definitely is good. And also, Alario summons this. And if you're like, That's a lot of points for a summon. Yeah, and like if you just want, like, wow. you're playing Alario and you're like, oh, I really wanted that to fight last. Alright, cool. Damn. Go, Got buddy. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. Wonderful. Branch Witch. So... She changed very subtly, but I think it has absurd ramifications for her as a unit. Absurd ramifications. Yeah, so like she was never right. really played before. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that changed is um her spell. Equal to the casting girl. Yeah. So she used to be Casting value 5, what it used to be is you pick an enemy unit and you roll equal to the cast. And then for each 5 up, it's a mortal wound. And now it's for each enemy within 9 inches. So, you, you might be thinking this is familiar. And it looks exactly like the Warsong Revenant spell, but with a 5 to cast instead of a 7 to cast. And you would be right. That's what they did huh. here. They just gave him the Warsong Revenant spell? Yeah, but on a 5 instead of a... Seven. Is it literally the same thing? Yes. Wait, what? Which is 
it's interesting how it came to this because I think the Warsong Revenant, his spell was just her spell, but turned into an AOE. And like that was oh, off there. Okay. And then they yeah. just turned hers into an AOE. It's so weird. So she's 130 points, and the Warsong Revenant is 305. Uh huh. So she's like 175 points less for the same spell. That's wild. Do you just take her? Yeah. I don't know. My initial reaction is maybe, yeah. But, like, she's also, like, a 5-wound, five 5-up five save. And he's, like, 7 wounds with a ward. But, I mean, she's also, like, what you're going to fill out the, uh... Fill out your, um... Your battalion with, right? But he also fits the sub-commander, because he's only 7 wounds. Yeah, but you need 2, right? Yeah, so you just take 2 of her? You, you just take her and the... And the the revenant, and you just run both. Yeah, right. That's a good point. I don't know. Yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. Like I don't think she's bad anymore. Like I think that's a good spell. And like the I spells mean, it... are so good in this army that like another wizard's not bad. Right. She's costed right, like a little high because she doesn't really do anything other than be a wizard. Yeah. But like, I think she's playable now. That's awesome. Like yeah, and like. If you want, and like that's kind of cool if you have them both too, because like you choose which one casts the uh, AOE, and you can have four spells if you take that enhancement, right? Yeah. So that's what that's options. So I think she has a place now, even though it's like All the right. laziest design for that place, but it's there. Yeah. So I got a, I got a I got a thing that I'm doing that I'm really enjoying. So I want to share with the class. Yeah, sure. Let's hear it. So. I noticed this guy had like a bunch of like in the in the picture has like a bunch of like uh like I'd say dirty metal, maybe not rusty, but like like grimy, a little grimy. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm doing is I'm mixing some uh, Mornfang Brown with some Lead Belcher, and it actually makes a really nice effect for that. That's and so cool. it's it's got like it's like a nice like like more brown silver, like just gives it like a bit of a grimy look. Mm -hmm. And I'm really enjoying it. Anyway. That's yeah, all, that's, that's all awesome, though. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. That guy's coming out great. Thank you. All right. And then... Gossamid Archers, the guys I'm painting. And these this is the hardest unit in the book for me to evaluate. I think they could be everywhere, or they could be nowhere. I don't know. But let's talk about them. Yeah. So, they're uh, 12 move, 2 wounds, 5 up save... Six bravery. They're 220 points for five of them. That's very expensive. Yeah. Got a 12-inch attack for a bow. Two attacks, threes, threes, no rend, one damage. Sixes to hit are D3 mortal wounds. Oh, yeah, they have that. Yeah. That makes them... It's like, that's the part that you're like, oh, maybe, though. Hang on. And then when they unleash hell on a two-up, they retreat. Yeah. So That's, that's when you're like, oh, maybe, though. Yeah. I just because I think the damage is there, and I think like because that's not an insane amount of damage for those points, clearly. But like we've seen like the foxes and the luminethalist do absurd things to a game, right? Yeah, and like this is less points, and it has like a very similar role to that. I would yeah. say. Like I just I think that ability to like move after unleashing hell is the reason why you bring them. Because they're just so hard to like pin down, dislodge at that point. At that point. Yeah. yeah, pin down. Yeah, that's the, that's the word. And I think the issue with that is that it makes it terrible to run in multiples is my first take on this. But maybe like you can like set them up in a way where only one of them really gets charged. And you only really need to uh, unleash hell with one of them, right? Yeah. There I would wonder though if like, it's like, well, at that point, are you just losing out on efficiency then yeah i think so like you're just missing out on shots it seems like what, what are they coming unit of 10 or five rather unit of five yep unit of five. so do you run them as like what single unit of 10 and just like absolutely decimate something and then block like a, like you, you hit the them point. like you go up you hit them at 12 range they come after you you go haha i do it again and then retreat how, how far can you fall back uh 12 inches is their move so that Oh, you just get to move 12 away? Yep. Holy fuck. Oh, that's silly. Yeah, on a 2-up. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think, like, wow. a unit reinforced is the way to go. Because they also have the dispersed formation thing. Which is, um, they their coherency is two inches instead of one. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so they can actually take up a pretty good deal of space. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you, like, run a bunch of small units of these, you just, um, get laughed at by, like, Teclis or Croak or anything that does, like, a... You, uh, other Sylvaneth, too, with their, like, AoE spell. Like, these just die to AoE magic so hard. I, I think, think so? Yeah, because you do, like, D3 damage to them. That kills, like, one and a half. Oh, are they only one wound each? They're two wounds each. Okay. Yeah. Oh, one and a half. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Mm -hmm. Or, like, actually, because the way that, like, impacts hit works, too, is they go off before Unleash Hell. So if you have something with like impressive impact hits, they don't care. They no, just... because they're not actually there. Well, because you charge them and then you do the impact hits and then you kill like, like think of the ogre one where it's like you roll a dice equal to the charge and each four up is a mortal yeah. wound. Yep. Like not likely, but you could wipe off the unit. But what is yeah, likely to happen is like you're gonna do like six damage and kill three of them. Yeah. And then you're like, well, I, I mean, know what I needed to do here. I mean, then it's just target priority, right? You, yeah. You just got to know that you can't you can't go after those guys. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I just, I don't... They're not carrying the book, but I think they're cool for the book. I think there's something there, honestly. There's something really there, do. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I... I've it seen might some actually takes... be super annoying. Yeah, I've seen some takes where it's just like... People are running like six units of five. And I just think that's not at all the thing to do. Yeah. So they can only retreat if the unleash if they unleash hell? hell? Yeah. Okay, so they can't actually... So all you can right. only do it once. Yeah. And that's the problem. Which is why I think one reinforced of these is like... Very good. I mean, like... Is it very good to the point that you always run it? Because it might be. Because that's 440 points. So te two attacks each. So that's 20 attacks. So that's like, what, like seven and a half mortal wounds on average, something like that? That's a lot. Yeah. And then you gotta figure you're actually going to unleash hell as well, and you're really caring more about the sixes. And so when, when something's doing that much damage with sixes, they don't care about the minus one to hit as much. Yeah. And so you're really getting two full volleys into this thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's... And so what are we thinking, like... I don't know. Assuming your math was right, I'm not doing the math. Is yeah. that was a very rough estimate, anyway? Sure. Is yeah. 15 mortal wounds to something? Like, yeah, that's a lot. Like, and, and by the way, they're not taking any damage while they do this, unless it's like impact hits. But yes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. But that's like the pseudo counter, I guess. But yeah. But at the same time, like, mm -hmm. oh no. It's not like those are rare either, though. Is the thing. They're not rare, but they're on specific units, so like yeah. you kind of. You can kind of dodge and weave a little bit, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it certainly does. <clears throat> yeah, I, I like that it works on Unleash Hell. Because I think if everybody in your army could do this, like that would be awful for the game. Right, yes. Um, I don't know, though. Like I think you want exactly one reinforced unit. And I think they do really well in your list, for that's sure. Ex that's exactly my... Yeah. yeah. yeah I think they're exactly really good. Well. Yeah. But, like, I could also just see, like, the Unleash Hell thing is, like, you just set it up with one of the units, and that's enough a turn, and then you just have, like, a really good spam list here. I don't think that's out of the question, either. Yeah. Well, okay, so the question is, are they good enough for their points that you can run them at all? I think the answer is yes. Yep, I think the answer is yes, also. So, at that point, when do you not run them? If you have other stuff that you're really trying to do, I think. Okay. Like, I think if you're doing, like, pure Kurnoth lists, I think that... Because they're, like, dedicated anvils. Yeah. And, like, you could do a very dedicated Kurnoth list and not care about these. I think okay. if you're doing a very dedicated Bug Rider list, you might not want these, because you want the enough of them to, like, do the strike first, and then enough to have, like, the support to heal them behind. Sure. Yeah. I think I think you normally you're running these though. I think you're right. Like I feel I feel like in the in the um these are a perfect complement to the uh to the um uh the list we were making. The yeah. um Spirit of Dirthu list. Yeah, I think so too. 
think they drop it there. Because you don't need battle line there because you're doing your trees. Right, exactly. Yeah, I think they're really good. Yeah, I... I think they are. Mm -hmm. Could but be wrong. I could just see the damage not being enough compared to other stuff you could do in this book too, though, you know? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. And, like, what if they just get ignored? Too, right? Well, how fast do they move? They move 12, right? Yeah. Hard to ignore something that can come into your face. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, and because they're ranged, like, that's 24 inches of power projection right there. Right, and that's really good. <clears throat> also, yeah. you have an army that teleports, and if you don't really want to teleport anything else, you can yeah, just put you them just, wherever. You, yeah. you would literally just teleport them wherever on the map. It's like that just... argument I had for crossbows, but on a good unit instead of... Right, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't... I, yeah, I think these are good. I, I think they are. Good. Yeah. I don't know if I'm convincing you or not, but I think they are. <laughs> well, you don't really have to convince me they were good, necessarily, because I believe yeah. that. I just... I don't know if this is the meta unit, or if it's just a good unit. I think it's just a good unit. I think it's just but a I think good unit. I think you're going to see a lot of it. Yeah. I don't know. They're exciting. I could be totally wrong. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, are they really weak to something that we're just not thinking of? Like, that's entirely possible, too. I just think but, I mean, you said they have two wounds. wounds. And, like, impact charges are pretty... Two big things. Yeah. And I just... They're not a lot of wounds, either. I think other yeah. shooting does not care about them. But if they're shooting these, are you happy? Probably not. Yeah. Because that's a big investment. That's what I'm thinking. So, yeah. yeah, so maybe they're weak to, like, longer range archers. Yeah. And and the longer range archers with mortal wounds, so, like, specifically, like, sentinels and uh, bow snakes. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, that sounds right. There's just a lot of stuff that can deal with them. But that's good, even, for a game. Right, which is fine. Yeah. yeah. I think they're good against a lot of things. Yeah. So I think it just depends on like how the meta shakes out yep. and like what, what you see a lot. Exactly. But yeah, like you see where like they're really tough to evaluate because of that. Oh There's absolutely. There's a lot of ifs in this unit. Yep. I think in general you're gonna you're gonna enjoy having them. And they're gonna be very annoying for your opponent yeah, to deal with. I want one more box, to be honest. Do you, do you have the one, the set one. of five? Yeah, I have a set of yeah. five. Yeah, I think I think ten is definitely the way to go, and they would be very annoying as yeah. that. I agree. All right, nine thirty. We're almost there. So almost the there. Bug riders yeah. are fucking awesome. Okay, let's hear. So, two hundred ten points for three for the faster one. They're both five wounds, twelve. Yeah, five wounds, four up save, seven bravery. The champion adds one to the attack characteristic of the lance. Uh, the banner lets you... Uh, what is it? Pile up. Pile and move six inches. Which is really cool for that alpha strike list we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And then the musician is a five-up rally. Which I Five-up rally. It's pretty good. It kind of wants you to reinforce these, but... It, it does. That's I think weird. we decided we wanted to, even like twice. Yeah. Have them be battle line, keep them, keep it going. Yep. So like that's cool. And their attacks, their four attacks, threes, threes minus two, one, three attacks, fours, threes minus one, one. So seven attacks, one damage, decent rend, pretty good bounty hunter. Yep. Oh, and definitely. When it charges, it gets first strike, which is makes you want to run them in tandem with other stuff too. So you like. Charge him in with a Spirit of Durthu. You fight with these and then the Spirit of Durthu. That's cool. That would be... Yeah, that would yeah. be good. And at the end of each phase, if enemy models were slain by an attack made by this unit, you can heal all wounds allocated to this unit. Oh, okay. Yep. That doesn't suck. It's great. So wait a second. So, can you can only can you only do the Fire and Fade thing once per per round? Yes. Okay, okay. Because I was going to say, it seems like these guys can literally just go in... Strike first, back out, and there's no, there's nothing anyone can do. Yeah. But if you can only do it once, then you can't just like super mass send them. Yeah. And like they have to fire and fade into another terrain piece with nobody near it. So, if, so if it, they're smart and they put everybody near everything. 
Well, I mean, you, my thought is you're always going to have one thing in your territory that you control so that yeah. you can just go Come back, back there, right? Yep. Because you, because you say nothing near it, but I assume that only needs an opponent's right? Correct, yeah. No enemy near yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, I... No, I'm, it's, it's definitely a very strong ability. Yeah. Like I've said that and previously, it, yeah. And how, uh, how, how... What's their move again? 14? Or, oh, yeah. No, I think that's absolutely the play, is you, and a is you like... As you teleport home and then just like re back. like you you put like one of your tree your initial tree or maybe an overgrown terrain piece you pick like right in the middle of your deployment zone like yep. forward if you can and then you just have them you just like send shoot them out and send them back and then shoot them out and teleport back and do that Cause... nice little song and dance yeah when they're battle line they get the uh, free movement too right yeah they're great That's... yeah. The other unit, how it's different, is they don't get the strike first. They have one less attack on their uh, rider weapon, but it's two damage instead of one. Uh. Their 12-inch move instead of 14. And when, what phase is it? Once per turn, at the end of your movement phase, you pick one Sylvaneth unit uh, wholly within 12. And on a 2-up, return a slain model to that unit. So they can pick themselves. They can pick Kurnoths. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, damn. And they're 230. Like, they're 230. both very good. Yeah, I think so. And, like, that almost makes me, like, not want to return them to my home base and just try to grind out, like, with a big unit of nine that Alpha struck and then have one of these behind them to, like, on a two up, pop them up. And then, like, Vesperal Gem for the, uh, spell that returns one slain model which can turn one of the nine right i mean that's just it right like you don't have to return them to yeah. home and you could you could do whatever makes most sense at the time yeah exactly and like against which armies like you might want to do different things and depending on how much damage you do yeah so like that's a great situation to be in mm -hmm. and it's like all your decision on what what how you want that to go yeah like i could see the list being a unit of nine of the uh, Spite Rider Lancers and then two units of three Revenant Seekers. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you can't double tap the same unit. So if you have two your Revenant Seekers, you couldn't bring back two to the Riders, for example. But like that gives you some coverage. And then all your battle lines super mobile. Yep. And, like if you want a unit of Kurnoth somewhere. Which I don't think are useless either. We haven't seen him yet, so we don't yeah. know. We'll talk about... We can talk about that soon, but... Overall, yeah. these are like a perfect 5 out of 7 unit for this army. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to have so many more of them. So now we get to Kurnoth Hunters. So, there are 3 up saved now. And they're Bravery 7 instead of 6, which is pretty big, so you don't lose a guy randomly. Oh, that, yeah. that's just so big. Yeah, Champions that is such a good change. Add one to the attack characteristic instead of plus one to hit, which is nice. Yep. And their new Envoys of the Everqueen, it used to be like they extended the range of command abilities through them, but now it's just they count as being a tree when you're holy within six of them, which I think is so much better for this book. Yeah, I mean, the book changed, right? So yep. I think, I feel like that's an ability that this book wants. Yep. And there are three up save base. And they used to be, yeah, when Sylvaneth was new, they were a four-up save, and they could choose not to pile in and get reroll saves. And then, like, the first third edition FAQ turned it into a plus one to save, and now it's just mm -hmm. a three-up save. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and okay, I like Ooh, that better save. because you can make it a two-up save. Exactly. And I think the math on a two-up save is pretty close to a math on a, a four-up rerolling. Except for Rend is so much more common now that I think you're yeah, just so better off with the two up every time. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the four up is a four up rerolling is uh is three fourths of the attacks will will get through. Yep. Or will be blocked rather. So yeah. it's it two up is actually still better than that. Yes. So like I think that's huge. Yep. I agree. And I think that's lost on people. Um, are people complaining about it? Yeah, people are saying this unit's dead. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the bow is not super impressive damage. It's two attacks, four is three is minus one, two. But it's so easy, especially in the sub-faction that makes them battle line, to get uh, threes, twos on these Karanoth Hunters with bows. Mm. And the thing, too, about Wildwood is they block line of sight for your opponents, but not for you. So you can oh, that's put pretty sweet. one of these in like the woods somewhere and just hide and then just pepper down the opponent and they can't really do anything about it. So how many points are these? 230 for three of them. Okay. And and, <clears throat> and what's the range? 30. 30? Okay. So I've got to say, like, are these just worse than the Gossamer Archers? Probably. It kind of sounds like it. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not horribly impressive. Yeah, we'd have to do the yeah, math I... hammer on it, but like, there's some trick. They're not dead units. Sure, they're not. Yeah, there might the Godsmiths I... might just be better. I feel like the archers are probably not going to see much play, and the reason I think that is because, like, a three up save is kind of wasted on them, right? Yeah. Um. Because you, in theory, it's an archer. You you just don't want them in combat. They don't need to be in combat to be effective, therefore they don't need a good save. And especially the uh, situation I described to you where they're hiding in the woods. To not exactly, be right? Yeah. So I think I think just there's a lot of points wasted on them for their save. Yep. And their, and their toughness, right? That you're not really going to use. And it's not like they're so good I think, in combat either. Right. So I think that's why you probably aren't going to run them. Yeah. Because, I mean, unless, I mean, if you have them and you like them, like, that's fine. Yeah, I, I think have a, the, one I, unit of them, and they performed okay. Right. Yeah. But I feel like the Gossamer Archers are going to be, like, impressive. Whereas, you know, if you run those, it'll be like, well, they're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think the other two Kurnoths are just so good. So it's really hard to ask to run the bow ones. Right. But I, I, I wonder if there's, like, a list out there where it's just, like, a bunch of Gossamids, a bunch of Kurnoths with bows. Go ham. Uh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, at that point, like, you might not want the extra unit of Gossamids, but you might still want some more range damage. It's possible. Yeah. yeah. I can see it. Because you just want something, like, durable. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, though. I'm a little skeptical about these, but I don't think they're bad. Yep. Kurnoth Hunters with yeah. swords, however... Are just very, very good. Sweet. Yep. So they're four, we four attacks, threes, threes, minus one, two damage. Sixes to hit are two mortal wounds, and the attack sequence ends. Oh, right. Yeah. I remember these. Yeah. That was quite good. 250 for three of them, and then the three up save. And the leader gets one extra attack. Really cool in bounty hunters. Yep. And then, like, I forgot the other ones, but, like, they have a. At the end of combat, roll a dice for each model in this unit on a four if it's a mortal wound. Now, now, are people saying that these are dead, too? They're saying all Kurnoths are dead. Oh. No, that's good. Okay. Well, this is, like, your best cool. hammer, yeah. I think. It's slow, but you're in a teleporting book. Right. I I think that sounds good. Yeah, you bring Warsinger, which is gives them the three-inch movement on everybody within 12. And then these move eight now. Like that's nice. Yeah. I yeah, these are these are gonna be played. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And then one more Kurnoth unit is the Scythe Kurnoth unit. And I think there's also debate on which one's better, but I just think they're different roles. So the Yeah, Scythe, I think we mapped that out, right? Yeah. And I think we determined that the swords were a little bit more damage. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, not always. Mm -hmm. These have better rend, which is pretty important. And the thing that actually I think is the big distinction here is the two-inch range. So you run this in a unit of six, right? So it's a three-up save base. You put Mystic Shield on it. You all-out defense. And then there's the uh, endless spell that reduces rend on them by one. So you have a 30-wound block of guys just in the middle, and you could teleport them where you need them to be, of course. Yeah. And it's just very difficult to move. Now you have the Spite Riders returning one on a two-up, and you have the spell that returns one. 
Like, I think this sounds, is an anvil. That sounds pretty good to me. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I just... Like, I think this is like the eels all over again. It's like, oh, the eels are dead. And they're never going to be played again. It's like, that's the worst take I've yeah. ever heard. And it's like, they're very good still. Right, yeah. But I think it's just that all over again. I, I think these are awesome. Yeah, I... I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we're missing something really obvious, but I don't think so. No, I think... I think, like, re-rolls feels like that you never fail to save. But that... As an OCR player, I can tell you that's not true. Yeah. So there's times where you know it what? feels like it, but it's it's not the case. I gotta get I gotta get over the fear... Any fear of being wrong on the internet again. Yeah. I had that at the beginning. I, it's been slowly getting away from me a little bit. No, no, no. No. That's a bad take, guys. Yeah, these guys are good. And, and if it makes you feel better, we haven't been that wrong yet. Ah, I know. I well, okay. So that actually makes me more scared of being wrong. Yeah. Not having been too ter- too terribly wrong. So mm. no, I just gotta, I just gotta not give a shit. Just, yeah, exactly. Just you know, be like, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. You, you guys, bad takes. Yeah. Exactly. If someone shows me the video later, I'll be like, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, like, I don't know, like, I think we put enough, like, math behind it to, like, yeah. actually have, like, yeah. Come on, if you think about it, yeah. yeah. This is actually a huge upgrade for this unit. I think so. And I have I have a list, which I think is going to be great. It's a unit of six of these, two units of three of the swords. A, um, a bow off, which probably is just better as Gossamid, like you said. Might be, yeah. Lady of I Vines. think it is. Um, the Arch Revenant, and then the uh, War Song Revenant, and like that, I think it's gonna perform very well. I had a list similar to that in my first game. I just didn't have the uh, sights yet, mm-hmm. and it fought Nurgle, and like it cut through Nurgle like pretty efficiently. That's pretty sweet. He so charged me the unit of Blight Kings, and I killed it in two turns. Damn. Yeah. So like, and that Blight and Kings I, or World to, shit uh, too. To yeah. sneeze at, either. Yeah. It was awesome. Like I think, I think Kurnoffs are great now. Like I think they're still the backbone of this army, unless you're doing like a very skew <laughs> list. But like you have right. the option to now. Like the dragon, or still... the dragonfly riders, or the tree lords are going to be a great list too. Yep. And then the last unit on this page, I'm a little torn on. I think they're good, but let's talk about them. Dryads. So they're. I forget exactly what they did before, but they were like just cheap chaff, and I think they still are. They're one wound each, ten for a hundred points, five up save. And if you're within nine inches of a tree, you get minus one to hit and wound on them. I just want to hit and wound on them? Yeah. If you're within ten inches of a tree. Now, okay, is it just tree or is it overgrown? Overgrown terrain feature or a friendly wake in Wildwood, yeah. Said holy, holy within ten of one, eight or nine, but yes, nine. I mean, that seems pretty. Like it seems like you have to like be good at positioning, but like you can be, and you can like reduce someone's damage significantly on them by doing that, yeah. right? And have like a way tankier unit than you have any right to be. Yeah, and like we talked, I guess this is where we were wrong too before. Is like we talked like. The uh, chain rasp being 110 for like the five up unrendable. Uh-huh. Like, this, yeah, these units got way worse and it's sad, but like it's still a good defensive unit. Yeah. And like, like, yeah, five up save with like a defensive buff is actually pretty good. Yeah, you're, you're not like, re- you're reducing the damage they're doing by, by, um, by making it harder, like threes, threes going to, Four, to fours. fours, fours, it going is going from like a forty four percent chance to hit to a twenty five percent chance. Yeah, like that's a pretty significant reduction in wound output. Yeah, I think they used to be able to get to a four up save in the woods. I think, and then it's uh-huh. this instead, and then like on uh-huh. your turn, you pick an enemy unit to get minus one to hit. So it was just like this weird, complicated thing, and now it's just a pretty good. Yeah, I think if you can get them in there, it's that seems pretty solid to me. Yeah, yeah, I like them. I th- yeah, I, I yeah, I think I do too. This is a big change too. Is the spite revenants, 
in the Tree Revenant. They got an extra wound each and went up about 30% in points. Oh, they got an extra wound each. Yeah. Ooh, which I like that huge. a lot, actually. Because I think yeah. you remember like playing against them and they just crumpled to anything. Oh, absolutely. And, like Two wounds is so much different than one wound. Yeah, absolutely. It's ridiculous. Is, yeah. And, and it, makes, it makes them feel different than Dryads, too. Yeah. Because I always thought it was just like, it was just like weird that they were all like one wound. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, it just felt weird overall to me. Yeah. And that, that feels different and better, I think. Yeah, it's different and better for sure. And yeah. then the other thing that's different too is they used to have like the tree revenants where it had an ability where it was like, oh, um, once per turn you can reroll a hit or a wound or a save. And now like every combat they just get a free all out attack or all out defense. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yep. And then like they still have like they can teleport anywhere for their movement. Great unit. You know what I think they did in this game that's interesting, and I should probably not get on tangents because it's <laughs> almost ten yeah. again. But um, <clears throat> the thing they did is they added more rules that you got to learn to start with. Yeah. But that let them streamline a lot of other rules. Like as a result, themselves. Yeah. Yeah, because you 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 now have these other things. Like instead of giving just like instead of giving like super specific abilities you can be like hey it just has this thing that you already know yeah exactly. and so it's way easier to describe that ability right yep and it's great yeah i yep. think that's i think that's a very healthy thing yeah like every book in third edition so far has been like amazing and this is no exception yeah like yeah and yeah and it's just like an, a really easy to understand rule and like you know how good all-out attack and all-out defense is because you've been playing with it for every army Right. Yeah, you yeah. you don't have to like super reevaluate it. Yeah. Or like read too much into it. You just be like, mm -hmm. oh, free free that thing I know. Great. Yeah. You don't need to like, like be like, oh, was it? Does it stack was it with all hit? Attack, does it wound? Or, yeah. yeah. Does it do? Yeah. All yeah. those weird things. Exactly. And this thing is uh, one ten for five of them. So like that. That's pretty. It's a pretty good price. Yeah, that's not bad, honestly. Yeah, I'm. Big fan. And then Spite Revenants, how they changed. They got the extra wound, and they used to have, like, extra models flee near them. And that rule's gone, and now they just do uh, mortal wounds on sixes to hit. That's way better. There are three attacks each, too, so, like, a unit of five is 15 attacks. Mm hmm That's decent. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think this is a great unit. It's not a generic battle line anymore. You have to be in Dreadwood to be battle line. Which is kind of a That's hit okay. for them, but... It, it is a hit for them, but at the same time, like, um, once again, uh, by them being generic battle line all the time and one wound, they just felt like just like slightly different dryads yeah. all the time, mm -hmm. which always just felt weird to me. Yeah. So I think I think that's better. It's a better I think design. that's fine. Yeah. 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 It's not they're not better for it, of course, but I think it's a better design overall. Yeah. And I just think like it gives them a purpose too. Right. And it's like, if you really want to run these, you have like a good sub-faction for them now. Yep. A good hero, yeah. And like, it's actually a, a tasty enough rule to want to run them. Yep. Yeah, instead of being like, oh, well, it's battle line, so I guess, to like, yeah, it's like, oh, it's wow. like, well, I've, I've got this random combination of dryads and spites and what have you, yeah. and tree revenants. It's like, alright, yeah, I'll run some combination of these as my battle line, it'll be fine. Yeah, and you're like, okay, now I want these. Instead of, yeah, instead of it just being like, well, there's only five of them, and they're cheap, and they're battle lines, so perfect. Yeah. I'll run that because they're attacks, but, like, they're the cheapest attacks, so great. Absolutely. In the interest of yeah. time, I'm just going to gloss over the uh, Underworlds. Uh, oh, absolutely. Skates Wild Hunt is a wizard for 110 points, basically. That's interesting. But other than yep. that, that's, eh, who cares? Yep. Yeah. Yilthari is a, a wizard with a unit of three. Yeah, Guardians with her, which are basically the tree revs without okay. the teleport, so I don't care. Yep. Glade Worm. Let's see what this does. Casting value, 7, moves 8, and its range is within 6. So, set up within 6, move 8. Uh, when it moves, roll a dice for each unit within 1 inch on a 3-up D3 Mortal Wounds. 
and on for each Sylvaneth within six on a three up heals D three. Fifty points. Interesting. That could be pretty good, honestly. Yeah. I like it. I think if yeah, because if you have like fifty points left over, it's probably worth trying. Yeah. Like the heal. I think that's really a cool. Lot. Yeah. There's a lot of heals already in the book, so maybe not. Yeah. I'm and D three a... damage never feels super significant, so and I think I'm more excited about the next one too. Alright, let's hear it. Which is Spite Horror. Yeah, Spite Swite. Yeah, Spite Swarm Hive. So, you set it up, you pick a unit within 9. It's casting value 7, range of 15, and it just stays put. And then you pick a unit within... I, just, I think I said 9 before. Yeah, 9 inches. And then you roll a dice, and on a 2-up, you pick one of the effects. One of them is add 3 inches to their move and charge. And the other one is uh, reduce the rend of attacks coming at them by one. Okay. That's interesting. Yep. So, like, you just... Yeah, Kawabunga, one of your units, like your spite unit we were talking about, right? Yeah. And then you then use it defensively for the rest of the game. So, like, plus three to move and charge, too. Right. That's way fast. Yeah. That's how you get your unit of Karanoths up there, too. Like, you want your anvil to be, because then you take, like, song, or, yeah, War Singer. So they're base 8, and then they're moving 11 now, and then they're adding plus 3 to their charge. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Ventral Skull Root. I did not even read this yet. Uh, Cast Valley 6, Range of 6. Moves 8. Unit failed to battle shock within 3 inches of it. Add D2 to the number that ran. Has no effect on Sylvaneth. On a 2-up, does D3 mortal wounds. Or D6 if it's wholly within 6 inches of a Wakened Wildwood. 60 points? That's not terrible. Not terrible, but for 60 points, am I running that? No. it's The horror no. gas is 60 points, and that just has the can't or the extra run but it can't it stops them from using all out or inspiring presence too and this doesn't right which i think that's a big difference if you want Huge this kind difference. of ability right yeah i yeah. think so too i'm not into it maybe we'll be proven wrong yeah. but yeah i'm not super interested so we glossed on this before awakened wildwoods you can set up as a one two or three and if they're like two or three they have to be touching like in a circle right they have the overgrown rule um. Yeah, so visibility is not blocked by Sylvaneth, but since it's a wildwood, and then wildwoods block visibility, so it's one way. So like you can see through them, and they can't see you through it, basically. Okay. And then yeah, that at, makes sense. At the end of the charge phase, roll a dice for each unit that does not have a Sylvaneth. All right, roll a dice for each unit that does not have the Sylvaneth keyword within one inches of an awakened wildwood. On a 6-up, it's D3 Mortal Wounds, and if any Wizards or Endless Spells are within 6 inches of the Awakened Wildwood, you add 2 to that roll. So oh, interesting. Some damage. Yeah. Yeah. It's another reason why you want Wizards all over your army. Right. Yeah. Does it have to be a Sylvaneth Wizard? If there are any Wizards or Endless Spells within 6 inches of an Awakened Wildwood. So, oh. Oh, enemies too. Yeah, that's cool. Interesting. Yep. And then the points at the end. Your allies are Cities of Sigmar, Fire Slayers, Ideneth, and Stormcast. Except. Yep. I might bring dragons in the list one day because it's fun, but... Mm. <laughs> you got a lot yeah. going on in this army, and it's really cool. Yeah. I don't care about the allies too much. The shark with the uh, anti-piling in might be kind of cool, but your tree lord does that too, you know? Yeah. I feel like, for us, we can really only evaluate, like what the army's gonna do by itself and like trying to evaluate like what the allies are gonna do also is just like a Insane. super tall task. Yeah. yeah. Unless there's, there's like a very two... obvious good one. Right. It's like, oh, they're allies with slaves. You can bring the Spharynx and Bellicor. Those are good. Yeah. Yeah, but there's nothing like that. Yeah. Yeah, overall though, I think this is a great book. Like, I have no complaints, it, it really. It seems like it, yeah. Like, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. seems like you've already played it and, and done decently with it anyway. 
I think it it's way tankier than it reads at first, too. I mean, it read pretty tanky. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, because remember when like when we played the old edition and it just crumpled to like anything? It's true. Yeah, and like there's just some abilities that didn't feel like they did much, and then they did a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah. Like the Kurnoth thing I always thought was good, but like playing it is way better than it seems. Just always having your like uh your season bonus is pretty much active anywhere you want it to be. Right. It's pretty big. The healing one extra wound is pretty nice too, because like you have so much two wound stuff. Right. And like the old book, you only had like one wound stuff, so it didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good point because yeah, the spites and the tree revenants having the two now. Yeah, it's actually, actually synergizes. A deal. Yeah. Yeah. The branch witch is playable, which is the first time ever in its life. <laughs> yep. One thing you might have noticed is it lost the uh, branch wraith. Which was the thing that summoned the unit of ten dryads on a casting value seven spell? I did think something was missing, but yeah. I don't know enough about it to to have even commented yeah. on it. Which is another reason why this book's dead, because you need to be summoning a unit of ten for free every turn to be competitive. Well, I mean, it, if you do in the old book, well, yeah. hopefully they made up for it in this book, right? Like, I think I they mean, certainly that's, have, but that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Honestly, that's kind of like a shitty rule too. Right. I'm not into it. It just like meant you had to like carry like a bunch of models with you. Yeah, like tons of dryads. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had to make the dryads not that good too, just in case. Yep. Because if you made them any any good at all, then there was too many of them suddenly. Yep. Right. Overall, I'm I couldn't be happier with this book for an army that I thought was just gonna like be on the shelf for a while. Right, now now you're excited to play him, right? Yeah, like, I'm getting more stuff for him. Yeah. And, like, I'm building it, yeah. That's, I mean, that's perfect, right? Yeah. That's wherever you want him to be. An awesome book, yeah. So, that's going to be it for the show tonight. I was going to pull up lists and, like, the list builder, but I didn't think we were going to be a full hour behind. <laughs> Even and we are. Even we started our review early, too. Yep. Holy <sighs> shit. So, we're gonna, I'm going to try to figure out something for the Skaven book. Because it has like twice the war scrolls. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and we like, can't. We can't. We can't do that. <laughs> I think we just spend too much time on the allegiance. Of... Maybe that's not even too much time because we have a lot of relevant things to say about allegiance and stuff. Because that's where the the most of the army is. Honestly, I think it's fine. Like, like when we actually have stuff to talk about, like the show going a little long is probably probably even a good thing. Yeah, I agree too. It's just like, I bet I could expedite. Like, I could put all the vermin lords in a group, right? Sure. And then be like, oh, their damage is relatively this. Yeah. We'll figure it out for sure, but... Yeah. Overall, fantastic book. But yeah, I think it's time to go. I think you need to get dinner. <laughs> I ate beforehand this time, so oh, I've cool. been good. Perfect. Yeah, I did it right. Excellent. I am so happy with this guy so yeah, he far. he looks great. So happy. Mm -hmm. This guy's awesome. Yeah, I'm out of super glue. But other than that, I gotta like do the ground, and then I gotta put the wings on, and I'm pretty. I think they're done. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I might dot the eyes, but I might not either. <laughs> yeah, no, I I actually couldn't be happier with this guy. That, that color scheme is just phenomenal. And he's not quite done. Mm -hmm. I got some some more stuff to do, but not too too much. The bugs are a little and... dark. I might have to do something to brighten them up, but. And it's not coming out on the camera very well. Yeah, it doesn't really come out on the camera, unfortunately. Yeah. But... Maybe if I bring the light a little closer. Yeah, it's just putting glare. Never mind. Yeah, that's okay. But yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, we're going to sign off now. We'll be back next week with Skaven, and we'll talk to everybody later. See you guys. Good night.